Hello and Hi. welcome to this stream. We are uh, starting a little bit in a hurry here because we uh, just seen that the uh, round four, 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 four of the, yes, uh, round of the women's four rapids have of started. The rapids. We've got women's and seniors at the moment, and we're going to also cover the whole lot of the junior bullet this session. Um, round four of the women's is um, an extremely exciting matchup on top board with international master Harriet Hunt against grandmaster Ketty Arakamia Grant. Um, and this game has already started. So these are the top two seeds in the women's rapid, which is a very strong event this time. Exactly. So um, let's have a look. I'm just going to swap the board around there. Uh, so we get white at the bottom. And it's Harriet with white um, against Ketavan as black. Um, no surprises there. Um, Harriet has always been a 1E4 player. Um, and Ketavan really has always been a Sicilian player. Um, so we've got a, um, um, a bishop b5 uh, Sicilian. Um, slightly unusual uh, what, um, what Ketty is doing now um, with, um, uh, with this last move, h6. So, I mean... One of Black's um, normal ideas um, in these sort of lines is to play the knight round to d7 uh, and then round to f8, um, play the pawn to e5 as well, and then play knight round to f8 to e6, covering f4 and also covering d4. Now, Ketavan's gone for something completely different here. She's played um, the move h6, which uh, I haven't seen um, um, before in actual fact. So I'm uh, wondering a little bit what, um, yeah, wondering what the plan is actually. So that's going to be quite, uh, quite interesting. Um, I guess maybe the, she wants you know, to avoid Harriet's opening lines and uh, and put it on her own resources already. Could be. I mean, one of White's ideas is to go bishop b3, queen d2, bishop h6. I mean, that's um, um, possible. So um, it could be that that's the idea. Um, you know, you can just uh, meet that with king h7 now. Um, that's possibly one of the ideas. Um, we'll see. I think um, um, Ketavan now playing for e7 to e5 here. So um, um, heading back a little bit into the same um, the same thing. This move queen e2 slightly unusual, actually. Um uh, just uh, the reason why it's unusual is that um, Black's Knight, um, if Black's Knight can still come to h5, then mm. um, um, yeah, that that queen could be a little bit um, a little bit awkward. I'll just show you what I mean a little bit. Um, it'll be easier to show on the board. Um, so, for example, um, let's just make a, a, a few um, random moves here. Knight h2. Um, we play e5. Then if f4, then knight h5 is actually quite awkward with the queen on e2 because we've got this threat knight g3 on top of uh, knight takes f4. So that's why I'm, uh, I'm a little surprised with the old uh, queen e2 line. I mean, normally we play, you know, in these variations, we play, um, yeah, bishop b3 and queen d2. I mean, that's the normal way of uh, putting the pieces. Mm. Maybe why we ever think, think about one. playing e5? Yeah, this is a very, um, uh, this is always a very interesting uh, thing. Do you want to play e5 or not? Um, because um, on the one hand, it, it stops this black plan of e5. On the other hand, it gives away, um, you know, these light squares around the um, uh, the center. So d5 mm. and f5. Um, <clears throat> with white, I've actually tended to play e5 quite early whenever I've had the opportunity. Yeah. And that has actually it, that's what out. it looks like to me. It looks like Queen E2 is lining up in order to do that. Yeah, I mean, that has always worked out um, uh, quite well for me. Yeah, and Harriet has done it. Actually done it, um, yeah. But it's, um, um, but it's, uh, it's a double-edged one. You know, that's yeah. the uh, knight E4. Cool. But this is um, uh, attacking uh, C5. E5 isn't hanging because uh, pawn H6 is, uh, is loose there. Um, knight G3, interesting from uh, Harriet there. Um, yeah, I mean, actually, I would have been, I would have been quite tempted to go uh, c4 in this position, because um, this knight doesn't have any good squares. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, for example, um, uh, after queen c7, e5, knight d5, here, b6. I mean, I would have been very tempted just to go c4 and a3 here when the knight comes oh, back yes, to a6. Well, very upside, <laughs> there, isn't it? I think really, I, I think this is very strong for white, actually. Um, um, but um, yeah, uh, White played uh, a, a bit more quietly with Knight G3. Um, 
not 100 percent sure you might be looking for um, yeah, an great 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 five. Yeah. yeah um i mean there's still the problem with this night and still the di the dilemma still remains actually because uh i mean yeah okay blacks could play the, this move queen d7 to let the knight go back to c7 yeah. um that's probably a good move uh it now starts looking a little bit weird what uh what black has done but i think this was a good move because uh c4 now we can just play knight c7 back to uh to e6 has she has she done it no that's she's, that's she's got she's, she's gone queen d7 yeah she's gone queen yeah. d7 so um um what is white going to do here rookie one that's uh, a good sensible move um i mean at some stage i mean h4 to h5 is a pretty um interesting thing to do um yeah. and um and at some stage as well you know some sort of um queen side plan with a3 to b4 our uh, ketty not even waiting for c4 we're going to bring the knight back to e6 round to e6 which is quite uh quite common there yeah. big problem for black here always is the light squared bishop how do you get this one active uh, because it's um you know uh, restricted by um uh, the pawn on c6 on the long diagonal and um uh yeah uh, for, for the rest it doesn't really have any great squares around here you do often play bishop e6 to d5 but um uh, obviously there's a limit to um to how many pieces you can put on the e6 square so um ah c3 has been played by white bishop a6 from black um yeah, I mean, actually, there was a um, um, uh, ah, and rook, rook there. Now there was a there was quite a um, uh, an interesting computer game here between uh, uh, two um, less known, well, well, less well known engines, very very strong, the same uh, Stoflais and Rochade, and Stoflais actually played just uh, c4, just like that, just giving away this d4 square and just claiming that it just wasn't a, a big deal to uh, to give it away. Um, so it's quite interesting. I think the only thing that um, you can say about this. I would be quite tempted to play knight d4 as black here um, very, very quickly at, at any rate, because um, I think when you go um, when you go uh, knight d4, I mean, what's white going to do? Maybe take, I'm not sure with a knight or with a bishop, but takes, um, but we really are going to uh, get, go c5 and then get bishop b7 yeah. in. And that bishop <coughs> suddenly found, uh, you know, huge employment. Um, the way that Stoflais did it in that computer game I mentioned mm. was actually it didn't have to take on d4, you know, so you could just leave it like that and uh, and the bishop remained, you know, just staring at this wall of pawns. But um, uh, this is a little bit more awkward. Let's just have a, a look at a few other games uh, quickly. Uh, Livy against Elite Player, that's Nina Pert as black. And um, so Olivia Smith as white. Um, uh, well, Nina, I don't know whether she, she just missed this... Uh, Last trick here, um, winning, uh, uh, threatening a discovered attack and also threatening the pawn because white can grab a pawn on b7. However, there's a few points to it. I mean, there's bishop e2, which is quite, uh, uh, could be a, is. A, a, a little the whole there. center. Indeed. Yeah, I mean, it might be, um, you know, I, I'd be tempted as white here actually just to, to let you take that exchange and then right, just yeah. uh, take something else. But now nah, the whole king side's weak. So um, uh, this is going to be a sharp one. I think bishop e2 is what. Uh, is what you should play here and uh, and just um, uh, go into it. But a, a very sharp uh, game there. Uh, what have we got? We've got uh, Raylin against Emily Mayton. Emily Mayton. Have we seen Emily before? In uh, No, I, I don't think that we have this tournament. No, I don't think so either. Um, now, this is, uh, ooh, knight c5. So white had uh, set up quite a nice little structure here with um, uh, some weak dark squares around here. Um, knight c5 is, uh, in principle, uh, the correct move. Uh, I'm well, a little bit... Emily Mayton uh, was born in 2007, so a very young player. And it looks like she beat Zoe Varney in round two Ooh. and drew with Maria Emilianova in round three. Oh, wow. She's having a hell, hell of a tournament. Having a good there. tournament. So um, uh, the thing that makes me a little bit worried, actually, is, um, uh, is queen b6 here, pinning the knight to the king um so uh and that has been played uh now white's got to be a little bit careful uh raylan's got to be a little bit careful here um now i'm wondering whether bishop d4 um is actually going to work tactically because i think there's something like for example knight to g4 um could be a little bit annoying um, mm, so we're discovering, this, yeah. yeah, we're discovering this attack on the bishop. Um, now, if you um, 
Uh, the question is, is whether you've got, you know, just ways to uh, to protect it like this. Um, but it's nerve wracking. I mean, we're going to start getting, uh, you know, all sorts of tactics like this. And uh, as, as, as well as Knight G4, there's also um, Knight E4 as well, you know, with the uh, with a similar idea, which might yeah. be even better in actual fact, because we're also attacking this one. So, yeah, because in that first line, you could could you take. Uh, well, I could queen? take. Yes. I can always no, do no, no. this. I mean, queen, no, take the queen d2. Uh, queen d2. If this works, this might not work. Queen d2, and then you're going e5. Yeah, or, or takes, takes, and e5, yeah. maybe. Um, you know, I, I think they're probably, you. Uh, I mean, this is pretty pretty nice for black in a way, I suppose. Maybe f5 and then d4 afterwards. Yes. But, uh, but white's emerging there. But I think that knight e4 might be... Um, anyway. Yeah. Might be stronger because uh, I'm I'm also trying to take here now, so I'm a little bit, a little bit concerned about that. Um, um, yeah, I mean, I might, I could go bishop a three, I suppose, but I'm going to get hit with knight d seven here. Um, you know, and again, there's this yeah. uh, very unpleasant pin. So quite a different. Yeah, bishop a three is what Raylin has done. So um, I think that knight d seven will be Black's idea. Um, and uh i mean maybe maybe i can do something like takes on here let's have a look um you know, maybe after here i can i can maybe just take on here yeah. takes and go b4 maybe just hold it Depends. but it's um yeah. It's a it's a little bit fraught, you know. I'm uh, obviously you're getting just a little bit nervous about uh, where your pieces are going to end up. For, you know, for example, uh, um, a move like here, for example, and uh, you're thinking, oh, how, how do I protect this one? You know, if I go here, I might go bishop a6. I've got bishop c4. I've got bishop b2. There's rook b8 coming in as well. Um, might survive for white, but it's um, it's pretty tricky. Um, let's have a look. We have got Lara, Lara. Lara Puta against uh, Zoe Varney. Oh, oh, and this is looking this is looking very, very good for Zoe Varney because uh, she is going to take that bishop and she's going to be a rook up. So um, looking very good for uh, horsey chess there. And from horsey chess, we move on to uh, photo chess. That's Maria Emilianova um, yeah. against uh, uh, Tashika Aurora. Yes. We've seen a lot of Tashika. Um, so what is this? Well, Black's under a little bit of pressure here. Um, pawn on a2 is hanging. Um, but, uh, yeah, that would be a bit risky for the uh, for the Black Queen. Um, and this knight on b5 is quite strong. We've also got some ideas of bishop f3. Well, Tashika is going for it. Bishop c4. Uh, now, I think queen a5 is uh, um, has to be done there. Um now, I'm wondering whether bishop c4 immediately was was necessary. Actually, I, I would have thought maybe maybe you could have just gone castles queen side. Was that possible? Castles king side, but okay, it takes queen e7. Oh, that's a risky one. That is very very risky because these pieces are are um, um, hanging a bit. Um, I mean, th the move that you think of straight away here is um, uh, bishop a6 for black. Funny sometimes I can't. Uh, to move on the board it won't let me um is um uh bishop a6 for uh for black here attacking these two and uh yeah white's got to decide how am i going to do that the king's not castled yet so um uh oh this has got uh, very very sharp this one um this one because i love the names doggy dalmatian that's rita a uh, reader sorry yeah. against uh lindsay pyun or rather, Lindsay Pion is Doggy Dalmatian, and the curious parrot is Rita Rukaya. Rita yes. Rukaya, sorry. Oh, sorry. I think we Trying missed to... board three on our way down. We'll, we'll go back to that. Uh, it who, seems like who... another extremely young player doing extremely well, Eugenia Carras. Um, and uh, sorry, this is on board three. Um, she has drawn with Harriet, beaten Elspieta Vine, and drawn with Nina. And now plays Trisha, so she's on two out of three against uh, the strong field. Who's um, Trisha? Trisha is secret superstar, isn't she? No, uh, sorry, I was. I'm talking about Geometry 2008. Secret superstar yeah, is yeah, Trisha. Yeah, yes, exactly right. right. Just, that I'm is just, the game. I'm just trying to, um, uh, to find. So Trisha's yeah. white. Eugenia is black. So both young players. 
um, but particularly Eugenia born in 2008 um, and I've looked up on the FIDE site she's there um, with a standard play rating of 1415 but obviously playing well above that this tournament um, and so she's black sorry in this position Okay, so uh, this is a, a Queen's Gambit declined. Um, White's doing pretty well, actually. White's uh, played it quite nicely. Um, it was a, one of those Carlsbad structures where White's gone um, f3 and e4, played to uh, push the pawn onto e4 and got a knight onto e4. So um, this uh, d6 square is um, very tempting for the knight. And of course, there's also threats of uh, something like um, knight f6. Um, just uh, um, uh, look at it. I mean, something like uh, Queen G3 um, is uh, fairly natural um, to play. Just uh, getting the queen on that diagonal and maybe thinking of playing a knight F6 uh, at some stage. Um, um, what else could be possible? Could be a little bit careful with this uh, rook if you if you move the bishop back to to B1, the knight C4 could come in. H3 is uh, is is very sensible. Um, I was just, uh, I was actually wondering about some specific tactics before, yeah. but um, um, so because uh, we could have gone queen g3, I was wondering about going knight f6 check here. And if knight takes, we could take, take, and then pin that, uh, um, yeah, yeah. that, that bishop somehow. So that looks quite good. Um, but h3 is, uh, is pretty decent, certainly. Um, I mean, White could just uh, play a move like Knight D6, um, you know, which is fairly strong, and just ask Black, are you going to sacrifice on there? Um, knight C8 would also be possible, but then you can move your other Knight in there. You know, that's uh, that's also quite good. Um, uh, it's a very pleasant position for White. Uh, probably uh, only, you know, sort of slight advantage realm, I guess, but um, but always more pleasant. There have been quite a few famous games with, uh, with this sort of thing. Um, let's have a look. We've got... Um, uh, Karina SC against Bark's Queen. That's uh, Karina, a uh, Karina we've seen before, haven't we? And uh, Sri mm. Rao. I'm not sure we've seen Sri before, um, but Sri looking uh, well, doing very well. Yes, I've seen the name. Um, okay, I don't okay. remember looking at her games. Yeah, uh, but uh, well, she seems to be a piece up here. Um, yeah. So uh, very going very very well indeed. And finally, ah, G uh, GH21. That's Georgina Headland, isn't Georgia it? Georgina Headland. Oh, headlong, headlong, that's right. Um, against Rock Solana. Um, and um, uh, what's happening here? Well, White is doing uh, rather well there, Rock Solana, with um, a few extra pawns and a dominating rook on the seventh. So looking good. Now let's go back to, um, uh, to the top board game. Crucial one, Harriet Hunt against uh, Ketavan. So Harriet, um, yeah. Uh, very very strong player. Um, yeah. I mean, dates really. I, I'd say from uh, from my time as a professional because uh, she was playing in the women's Olympiad team uh, around the same time I was playing in the men's Olympiad team. Um, international master, men's international master, um, and um, uh, rated twenty four hundred. Plays in the four NCL uh, nowadays, um, but not that much. Uh, not that much else. So great she to has see her. Three if, children um, as well. So. So she has her work cut out and she works. So she's a, a very multi-talented lady. Indeed, we did an interview with uh, with Harriet um, on our uh, uh, um, Chess for Life channel, um, our Chess for Life in the Time of Coronavirus series, and uh, a lovely uh, interview with her. So, I mean, do have a look at that one. If um, Just search on Chess for Life, Harriet Hunt, uh, interview and uh, and that should be uh, that should get you there and um, uh, very nice interview tells all about uh, her life and chess and everything like that. Uh, so um, now here um, this position uh, quite um, in general I say looks quite pleasant for um, um, for white. Um, I don't know whether it's you know bad bad for black, but um, uh, if you just look at um, at what's in the position, um, uh, you know open files. King yeah. is uh, a bit of a target, and of course this bishop um, is quite passive. So Ketavan's uh, trying to keep it tight at the back here by massing pieces on the uh, on the king's side. But um, I'd say this I mean, is the sort of position Harriet would like. Um, she likes having this sort of open play and and things on the king's side. And then in that game um, she was showing us in the Chess for Life video, she managed to line it all up to get a bishop to actually sacrifice on h6 and then deliver mate. Um, but she kind of likes. 
playing on the king's side and having a, a nice like small plus i suppose yeah i mean harriet's a very good uh, a very good attacking player you know that's uh, what that's what she's always been so i'd say this would be this would be a very good position for her and um yeah. uh, and of course and, uh, Etty, we've seen play all last week and she managed to finish the standard play position without dropping even a draw in the whole tournament uh, so also extremely strong um and so we'll see if she uh, if she does drop her first half or full point here um or if she managed to continue her completely perfect record yeah this is uh, this is looking very very this is pretty tricky really um uh and uh, of course Ketty also very low on time here relatively speaking so um this is um uh, yes now what are the time controls in this in this game she's oh she's only got 30 seconds left it's like 10 minutes plus 15 seconds isn't it the rapid play yeah that's right yeah that's right now she's uh, she's making a break for it. Uh, well, I think five. E six uh, E six is um, is obvious here, um, but Just then um, I would guess that after E six, is Black going to try and go F five here? Um, I would think so. But um, uh, again, it's very very hard to to get yourself um, uh, to make any real break for freedom here. I mean, maybe this is a, a decent way of organising. Random, randomly guessing here, but uh, we tie uh, the white, the white, uh, the white uh, pieces to um, to e6. Get the g file open and keep this bishop defending the h6 pawn. That might be uh, um, decent, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, why can start uh, even thinking about just trying to create some extra weaknesses there? I mean, it's a very pleasant position for white. So, I, and indeed, our queen d5 is uh, yeah, of course, this is much better. A much better setup here. I mean, Ketavan's done exactly what I said, um, but actually, uh, you, you really are kind of wondering now what other move is she going to make now? Um, because um, uh, I mean, everything, uh, yeah, is controlling quite beautifully here. So, Queen G seven, um, Bishop B five. Well, Queen G five um, is this the idea? Well, just Bishop F six actually. Mm. Um, I'm, I'm wondering whether whether. Um, whether you want to do this, actually, because, I mean, rook g6, I've just got queen f5. Oh, she, Harriet has done it. I, I was wondering whether you could just wait, actually. Yeah. Um, queen g5 is what um, uh, Ketavan has done. Um, yeah. Now, the only question is, um, I, I'm, that's what I was worrying about a bit. Um, is this rook? Um, I mean, bishop takes f6, I think you're going to do. And then we're going to take on f6, I think, with the pawn. Yeah. That um, Just to, because if you take with the queen... Well, if you take with the yeah, I've got to take with the pawn, and Maybe now you I can guess the rook, go e seven. I guess we're going to go e seven now, um, which um, yeah, is probably rook, on f five. If you that, want, to. is that going to be? Is that going to work? I mean, we're going to take that one. I think now we that has to be on e seven. Yeah, and we'll go king h eight. That's what we're going to do. Um, and I'm just wondering. I'm wondering how this is going. Rook e seven. I mean, it looks extraordinarily good for 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 uh, um, for white. Oh, sorry, let me. Keep on like the... H6 and then put your queen in on F7 and see what they sorry? do. Uh, this might be nonsense, of course. You uh, couldn't you? Oh wait. Yeah, I mean, we we can't go queen F7 because of queen G2, mate. Um, okay. And we can't. We've got to be a bit careful with with um, with ideas like um, uh, like this. Um, oh, why does it keep on topping the board? Um, we've got to be careful with ideas like this because um, uh, we're going to just have Queen C1 check and Queen F4s. So yeah. um, we can't we can't do that. Um, now, what we um, we can go round to B7. That is um, uh, a very looks like a very strong idea, threatening Rook H7 there, and we keep control of uh, of G2. But um, and the you don't you just don't have the checking distance there. You don't. You can't. Uh, the rook's covering e3, and this rook's covering f4. So that is what I would expect. Oh, uh, Harriet's. Oh, okay. Harriet went. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, this is also very strong, of course. Uh, it's not as uh, decisive, I think, as queen b7, but uh, this is also very good. Um, so I would expect Harriet now just to take on here and play king f2. That looks very. Uh, that looks very very strong. Because the king's all cut off anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. uh, so rook g6 and now uh, sorry uh, king f2 now uh, that's the one so what's Ketavan going to do rook g5 maybe um, a5 okay well I think I'll go rook e6 then uh, and this is really you know um, so maybe king g7 here 
Um, and then um, if you go rook b6, probably maybe go rook g5. That's right. You're going to try and give a few little checks. Um, yeah, I mean g4 looks uh, looks looks very looks very clear there. Yeah. I mean Harriet's a very experienced player. I mean I think she's going to uh, uh, to win this without too much uh, difficulty. Um, maybe rook b5 now. Um, I mean, what, you know, Black's going to take some pawns, but you're always going to have more, you know. So, uh, um, I said Queen B7 would have been the clear way to finish this off, but I'm expecting Harriet to uh, to finish this off. Let's just have a little look at a few more. Um, uh, Trisha against uh, Eugenia. Uh, so, Trisha uh, sacrificed a pawn there. Um, got a very dangerous uh, kingside attack here now. And uh, Queen E4 uh, lining up on G6 there. Um, yeah, Queen G5, that's a good move. Just um, uh, and looking to go Queen E5, E7. Oh, I'm wondering about this now. Um, okay, but now Queen E5 check. Actually, this has turned around uh, as we as we have been watching, uh, because now takes takes Rook takes uh, King F6 and Black's uh, this E7 pawn is doomed now. So um, a bit of a turnaround there, um, as we were watching. Yeah. So um, I think we just go G5 now just to keep this pawn on G6 safe. Um, um, and um, and Black's going to be a pawn up here. Um, oh, uh, yes, Harriet has beaten Ketavan. Uh, she just took uh, more pawns than Black, basically. And uh, uh, so a big result then, Ketavan's... Uh, um, well played to Harriet. Well played to Harriet. And um, yeah, Ketavan's uh, first uh, um, dropped anything, in actual fact, in the whole event, which just shows how... Uh, Amazingly, she's been playing. Um, Olivia Smith against um, uh, Nina Pert. Well, this is uh, um, a very interesting position. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, uh, Black is a pawn up, actually. I was uh, a bit confusing. Um, but um, obviously, um, well, white piece is nicely entrenched there. Can't take this pawn, of course, because uh, that would liberate e4, e3. Oh, but c4 played sharp line here. Um, uh, idea is if bishop c4 which uh, then I guess White's going to play Rook D7 here. Yeah, absolutely. 20 seconds left. F7. Yeah, Rook, Rook F7 is uh, is the best way. Now, I think you could maybe... Con oh, uh, I was wondering about just taking the pawn on A7 and getting a, an outside past A pawn. That might have been quite dangerous. Um, rook F6. Um, you could still just take, take an, on A7. You could get a, a draw by repetition as well. Um I'm just uh, oh rook takes f6 okay and maybe black is why going to take on there I am quite keen on uh, on this uh, getting this um uh pass a pawn but I think now e3 sorry I think e3 is uh, is the move to play now for black I think this is going to be very nasty we've got bishop d5 check oh bishop d5 played but that's that's too slow bishop e3 now this is a very unpleasant um uh thing ah rook f2 is what um Nina's going for uh yeah. Queen G5, uh, ooh, 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 Rook F2, that was going to be, I think that was also going to be dangerous. Ooh, 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 yeah, no. Uh, the time's playing, oh, good Lord, Bishop D4 check now, it's just winning for Olivia. Wow. Yeah. That is um, that is just, uh, I mean, that's just over. Ooh, a bit of a turnaround there. Well, the turnaround, it was a very close game anyway. Um Olivia thinking a long time here, probably also considering, uh, oh, okay, bishop h6 check would have been very good, but rook c1, rook c1, my goodness, it's going to be thrilled still maybe in this game. Um, uh, g5 is what I would do uh, to get rook h6 in. No, okay, rook e7, um, queen d6. Um, oh, ooh, very thrilling, rook f7. Um, B5, this is very dangerous for Black. Let's just have a quick look at uh, a few of the other secret superstar. Trisha, oh, Trisha's won a piece. Wow. So Trisha is actually um, looking good for the win there. Um, Ray Lynn uh, had an awkward position, but uh, a pawn up in a rook ending there. Um, probably this one's uh, um, equal. Um, so um, uh, these pawns are, are very, very vulnerable and... Uh, the king's perfectly placed. Ray Lynn bravely giving up the pawn and um, uh, going for the win there uh, with only eight seconds on a clock. So, um, wow. Um, okay. So, um, rook b7 played. 
Uh, I guess we're going to go rook a3, a7. Um, so, yeah, black should really make sure that uh, you've got stuff like, um, yeah, rook a4 check is a good start. Um, and uh, f6 now. And then the king's going to start coming for um, for these yeah. guys now. Oh, king d6, this is not right. Uh, f7's gone now. Yeah, this is not right at all. You've got to you got to go for counterplay against the pawns. So you're going to give up the rook for this pawn here. So um, uh, that is... Quite now let's have a look. Livy 2000 against Elite Player. Oh, these pawns. Nina desperately trying. Oh, that's actually kind of worked out interestingly. Um, A7, that's a good one to have. No, I thought this um, was over a moment ago. Sorry? I thought this was basically all over a moment ago. Well, I, it sort of is, I suppose, uh, still. But um, uh, um, Bishop C5 would have been really strong in that position. Um uh but okay queen e6 check is quite unpleasant king g7 will be the only move but then we go rook c7 yeah. um and this is going to be uh um this is going to be curtains i think um the key line is uh black yeah rook c7 great rook f7 we can actually just take on here oh no and now bishop d4 is going to be uh that's it and uh olivia smith puts away uh Nina Pert in a in a very a very thrilling and uh, a very thrilling uh, game there. Bishop F6 winning. Okay, wow. So lots of uh, lots of excitement there. Um, how does that leave us on the standings? On the standings. So we have, as a reminder, we had ah oh, actually the results I haven't appeared on the. Uh, on the chessresults.com. Uh, we know that Harriet won, Olivia won, and Trisha won. So three white wins on the top three boards, and Raylin won as well. So white wins on all of boards one to four. No, Raylin lost. Raylin, Raylin lost. Raylin lost on time. She lost on time. I was just assuming she. Oh, Raylin. Oh, Gosh. dear me. So young oh. Maiton has chalked up another point. Um, as black on four. Um, Lara Putar against Zoe Varney. Uh, Zoe won that one. Uh, she uh, she won that one uh, with a, a, a nasty fork. And Maria beat uh, um, uh, Toshika Aurora. Um, and uh, let me have a look. Uh, Elsa Elevine lost to um, Olga Latipova. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, Georgina Headlong uh, did lose indeed, um, and I'm I'm just uh, not quite sure about the uh, the names of uh, of the other players. But um, Rao is Bark's Queen. Like Bark's uh, Queen. Bark's uh, Queen. Uh, Bark's Queen. What did Bark's Queen do? I was I saw it there somewhere. Uh, sh that was a draw, in actual fact. That was a draw. Okay, so we did have a draw this round. Yeah. Okay, so those will be um, those will be playing again at one o'clock. What we propose to do at one o'clock is actually switch to the junior bullet because that will be a an extremely quick tournament, uh, both in terms of how long the tournament lasts and also for each individual game, um, is it's about as quick as you get junior bullet. Uh, so, so we will we will attempt to follow that as best we can. Do, do, do you know? Do you know? Do you know where where we? Do you know where we can? 45 we estimate and then we'll switch back to looking at the women's and we will also make sure we check in on the seniors uh from the seniors we uh, i'm gonna just have a look at it now i know that um keith arkle was intending to play in the over 50s let's see how he's doing round five out of seven yeah for sure he is actually half a point clear of the field he has three and a half out of four so just dropped one draw uh he drew with John Pitcher and beat Tim Kett, Mark Jossie and Clive Frostick. Um, so he would, I'd say he would be um, a fairly strong favourite actually for the over 50s rapid play, uh, but also a lot of other strong players. I've just noticed Chris Duncan's in there. He must be only just 50. Um, uh, Rob Wilmoth, um, Matthew Ball, who is the father of, um, I've forgotten their names. To to the two ball kids that we've uh, what's the name? Uh, girl and a boy um, who we've also seen some of their games throughout the week. Um, Clive Frostick, Rob Wilmoth, 
Mark Jossie, Remy Tayo, we've seen some of his games earlier in the week. Dave Walker, um, who is going to be playing Keith next round. I'm just going to quickly check into the over 65 Rapids as well. Um, in that tournament, we have at the top Dave Bray against Stuart Fishburne, uh, both on three, and also Mark Page against Paul Kemp, both on three. And also Pat Twomey has three, uh, and he's got a down float to Rob Taylor on two and a half. Uh, so very, very close. They must have each lost one game. Uh, very close at the top. Maybe there's been a few draws, actually. That would be. Yes, there has been a few draws. Uh, hey, Carl. Good to see you. Good to see you, Carl. Hi, Carl. Um, Natasha, do you happen to know how we can see the junior bullet, actually? Um, now, that is a good point. We could have technical issues if we're not actually... Because, uh, because, uh, it... I'll send a link to the junior bullet. The, oh, um, okay. Email from Mark Morell. Uh, let me okay. stick that out again for you. Uh, because um, like yesterday in the uh, in the bullet, it was um, a chess.com tournament, so we just uh, we saw it yeah. and we uh, we, we put it in the list. But, uh, juniors in it as well. Um, but uh, it's not it's not in the list of tournaments, so that's why I'm uh, I'm a little bit yeah, uh, yeah. Well, concerned about that. Let's just just let me see. It was Mark Morell, wasn't it, who sent the look from model. So just to uh, just talk about what to, what we've got to coming up also this afternoon, we've got the uh, the last round of the um, uh, championship. So that's actually quite um, quite exciting. It looked as if um, uh, Michael Adams, um, obviously uh, the strongest English player and um, certainly the uh, by far the strongest uh, player in this tournament, despite the presence of uh, a number of other grandmasters, um, it looked like he was going to run away with it completely. Um, but um, he got uh, pegged down a little bit with a few um, a few draws, three draws, um, after starting with uh, five out of five. But he's still a half a point clear on six and a half. And uh, he's got black against uh, Tanmay Chopra um, um, with black. So he's got black against Tanmay Chopra on board one, uh, a down float to, uh, uh, to a player on five um, because he's played all the top players. And then we've got Matthew Wadsworth against uh, Matthew Turner. Um, and then Daniel Fernandez against Amit Ghazi, and then uh, Bogdan Lalic against Harry Greaves. So it's quite a, um, yeah, quite an interesting uh, fight at the top there. So um, uh, that's, um, yeah, I mean, that's going to be uh, very, very interesting there. Now I've got a link to the to the I've, junior bullet. Again, I haven't quite myself got the link to work, so you can see if you have more luck than I did. Let's have a look. Oh, oh yeah, there we are, it. junior bullet. Junior, junior bullet, junior bullet, indeed. So um, it's go it's going to be quite a strong one because um, we uh, uh, we saw um, uh, well we watched the, um, the bullet yes we watched the um, the bullet yesterday um, and uh, the adult bullet and uh, I mean do watch our stream from yesterday it's on our game changer website I mean it was great fun to do um, and uh, but actually a number of these players were were very much towards the top of the uh, of the normal bullet because I mean bullets. One minute chess. Um, I mean, some chess playing ability is important. So, you know, the, the, the best players did sort of come to the top, but uh, also being able to um, um, being able to, uh, um, to to really move quickly is also obviously very important. And uh, the juniors were uh, incredibly fast. We saw some uh, some incredible people. Edward the, Ed, Edward the Conchessa was uh, was one guy who uh, you know moved incredibly fast beating Amit Garcy who uh, it was actually Amit's only loss in a in a 14 out of 15 win so um Richard uh, we got a um, a twitter thing from Ray Lynn that had us as rappers <laughs> indeed, <laughs> indeed. adult bullet so yeah definitely so who have we got in the um uh, who have we got here we've got um uh, um uh, Killer M, that's Shiraz uh, Royale. Finlay, Bo Finlay Bocock, Peter Finlay, I think you say, didn't you? You said, didn't you? And uh, um, he's uh, about 17, I think. Um, Adam Collins, we saw yesterday as well. Moonmaker, that's uh, Dennis Dupuis. Um, yeah. Ragged Airport, what a name that is. Um, so we've got some, uh, got some pretty, good, uh, pretty good people there. Now, I think what I'm going to try and do um let's have a look maybe i need to i've got a little bit of time here so um i want to eat a wrap mm. oh that's uh, <laughs> very tempting actually um we are going to uh see actually i'm going to 
Uh, do I have the commands that I did yesterday? I think not. Um, okay, well, I will just simply try and uh, um, do a few uh, commands for the... Oh, well, actually, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to follow the... Uh, repeat the commands for the uh, for all the junior tournaments, and I'm sure we're going to have uh, most of the guys there. Fuck. Following these guys. Let's see, have I been able to follow these guys? Whoa. Uh, not playing sounds, that's fine. Um, did that work at all? I'm wondering whether that uh, worked. Well, we'll just have to, uh, otherwise we'll just have to uh, uh, just click on people and uh, hopefully we'll be able to see their games. Um, I'll just try a few more commands because it would be, it's always nice having them, uh, having all these, uh, um, okay. all these boards just available. Uh, under 16s. Normally works this. I just uh, type it in, enter, and it normally tells me that I'm following an awful lot of people. <laughs> um, let's have a look. But uh, for some reason, some reason, not particularly doing it for me. Well, I think we'll try and follow it like this, and uh, we'll see how that works. So how much longer? Three minutes before the junior bullet starts. So uh, that is going to be very exciting. Let me just close a few of my windows as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, yesterday in the in the main bullet, um, um, we had uh, uh, Amit Ghazi, who scored 14 out of 15. And he was uh, a little bit of luck, of course, uh, at times. But that is sort of what happens with uh, <laughs> with bullet. Um, but I mean, also... Oh, he was some strong, there wasn't he, and fast. He's very fast. He, he's got he's got both of it really. I mean, he can play good moves quickly, um, and then he can also play bad moves very very quickly at the end, you know. And uh, and that's uh, those are the two key skills really, um, because um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I mentioned that you know if I get down to about uh, five seconds against two against uh, you know good bullet players, I'm never going to be fast enough. I'm always going to lose on time. So, uh, and, uh, well, Amita has, has those it's sort of skills. It's his own skill, really. isn't it? You, he, he must have practiced it an awful lot to get that fast and to know when to pre-move and when to do various things. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, I mean, Keith did a, did a great job. I mean, he was, uh, um, I thought he was going to, um, uh, to beat one of the uh, really fast guys, but uh, just at the end, he just, um, he just lost his rhythm. He was going King G7, King H6, King G7, King H6, you know, at super speed. But uh, uh, yeah, it, he, he just, uh, he just fell short at the end, but um, it was quite thrilling, quite thrilling to watch there. I'm going to so. turn off my camera for about two minutes before the, uh... The thing starts while I just quickly finish my lunch. <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> and uh, and you can still talk to me. I'm still here, um, and I'll be back in two minutes. Fair enough. It's uh, yes. We'll, we'll discreetly draw a veil across this scene <laughs> of Natasha eating her lunch. I don't know what it, I don't know what that lunch must be. It must be an incredibly messy lunch, one with lots of ketchup. I would have thought, and um, and. Uh, there's probably uh, ketchup splatters going all over the camera as we as we speak. It's um, um, yeah. I mean, we asked uh, a lot of the. Oh, let's have a look. Secret superstar against. Uh, oh, uh, this is uh, the women's uh, uh, tournament, which is uh, just started. So we can uh, Ooh, have yes. a look at that until the junior bullet starts. So this is uh, Harriet Hunt Black against um, uh, Trisha. Um, and oh, well, uh, isn't it? Sorry, mm. it's a tough old tournament. You, you just a... play Jesse, and then you're on playing Trisha next. Indeed, indeed. So this is uh, Nimzo Indian. This is Harriet's uh, favourite uh, line all the time as uh, as Black, uh, and we'll see what uh, Trisha comes up with there. Uh, we've also got um, I mean, uh, Nina. Yeah. So it's also Nina Pert against uh, Ketavan. So uh, I have this three night C three. This is what uh, Nina always uh, plays. We've seen a few games of. Uh, of hers on there. E5, very solid from Ketavan, going for a sort of a Botvinnik uh, structure there with the uh, pawns on E5 and C5. Uh, quite popular at the moment. Uh, Magnus Carlsen's won a lot of games with it. 
never really enjoyed it that much uh, as black uh, i have to say but um but it's uh it basically seems to be all right um have a quick look there 14 seconds to the uh to the junior bullet um bishop c4 bishop b7 uh, d3 is now uh, the normal line and then um after d3 uh back often plays knight f6 here uh, that's true and then uh, quite a common white white idea is to go oh knight e2 wow okay because uh, knight d2 is the the main idea going to go knight f1 to e3 to d5 not sure about knight e2 because that just gives black the opportunity to play d5 very quickly um ah we've got some uh, we've got some bullet here so uh let's start off okay killer m. Back on. killer m against frederick the mate Oh, what's, what's happened here? Killer M is, seems to be a piece down. Yes, he's a piece down. So I don't quite know how that happened. He's taken the pawn on B7. Um, they're playing. Oh, good Lord, he's lost his queen now. Oh, no! this, this after, oh, knight takes E5 now. Oh, dear me. A whole queen down uh, against Frederick the mate. Now, um, uh, uh, a sneaky attack on the queen there. Oh, he took the rook, but okay. Uh, rook d8 uh, this is going to be very very difficult to do anything with uh um yeah. i mean uh, because frederick the mate has got plenty of time um h6 decent swapping off pieces good technique queen b5 now or queen a7 very decent pawns are going to start going oh b4 rook d6 i'm pinning um i mean uh Shras doing a, a decent job here of keeping things going but uh well this bishop on a5 is now a bit offside knight e5 this is those pieces at rook d2 would be a nasty one. Oh, king h7 super safe rook d2 knight c6 is also good just taking that uh, bishop invading i don't think that shiraz is going to be able to save this one because the pieces are just coming right in and uh, queen c1 check will pick up another bishop oh queen g1 is also very good uh, g5 was a slightly odd one but uh, h5 is coming in and g4 is mate Ooh. wow first shock um adam collins against ryan wood Adam collins is in big trouble my goodness look at that um but he's got more oh, time oh. take the pawn take the pawn then you can't lose take the <laughs> pawn on a4 oh my yeah. goodness oh uh queen e6 check oh yeah he's yeah but take the pawn on a4 please black take the pawn <laughs> on a4 and you've got the draw in hand <laughs> oh no 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 no! he's bringing his king in it's all taking too long take the pawn on a4 oh no, no. no. oh dear me dear me dear me dear me dear me that was uh that was quite shocking um so uh yeah that was um that was quite uh quite scary there let's do um uh, we'll just do a follow um we'll do a follow finley boycott as well follow finley boycott a uh, balcott isn't it actually finley yeah. balcott um that's great finley balcott against uh arsony 76. so we've got um um uh a, an exchange uh, uh rye lopez and why it's playing uh, very uh, easy chess i'm not sure about this move b4 Chases a knight where it wants to go and also gives away the c4 square. Uh, ooh, white blacks now oh. miss this loss of a piece. This is going quite quickly. Knight takes f4. Queen takes, swapping off pieces, knight e4. This is, uh, I mean, white's played very, very quickly. Got a piece up and uh, 13 seconds advantage. This is going to be, uh, this is going to be very good there. Um, let's have a look uh we've got oh uh, adam collins against a uh, whimsical jam against adam collins a uh, whimsical jam um, we've seen whimsical jam play we, before. we have seen whimsical jam indeed um now what have we got here knight c6 takes takes uh, but black seems to be a piece up um a few seconds down but um, um i mean he's also played very very quickly the crumbs whimsical jam has been really fast um so uh now bishop e5 queen a6 oh sneaky knight e7 can give a queen a8 check now i think indeed bishop f8 but can we do anything dramatic bishop g5 unfortunately not bishop h6 we're going to do but knight g6 covers very easily and this should be um actually uh, uh black now has more time so this is going to be uh very very good here let's have a look at this one 22 against 11 um yeah black is going to win especially due to the uh 
due to the time here. Shivaga against Max Meme. Um, White is desperately trying to mate here. Oh, four <laughs> seconds left. He's going to get very close. Rook G5, that's pretty good. King E7, there's going to be an E6. Oh, did you see that, Rook F5? That was, uh, that's going to win it for Black. Uh, a Bishop E6 check, a Rook H6 check. And that is win it has been won for Black. Um, amazing, amazing. Now, I should see whether I want to... Uh, Diamondaut, why aren't we seeing Diamondaut? By Manort, a strong uh, uh, bullet player. We saw him uh, doing pretty well uh, yesterday. So a duckling two three four. My goodness. Um, we'll also uh, follow duckling two three four as well. Also important. Um, but this is uh, Diamondaut here. Okay. So uh, we've got an English, um, a symmetrical English here. Um, D3, D6, E4, going for a Botvinnik system now. A little bit odd with the knight on F3. But, um, uh, yeah, black uh, playing very sensibly here, just uh, getting the pieces around. Oh, uh, probably the knight didn't have to go straight to E6 because it's going to get hit by uh, by F5. Uh, but okay. Um, Bishop H6. Um, probably Rook B8 now to go B5 is quite uh, sensible. You can do it immediately. I mean, that's uh, there might be an E5 at some stage, but, oh, B4. Not sure about that one. That's uh, a bit of an odd one, but okay. Following up with a5, uh, e5. Uh, so attacking this one. Um, oh, you might have. Uh, it's not so bad uh, giving it away. So because this pawn's gone now. So gf takes some gf now. Oh, they're just taking the pawn. Um, rook a8, uh, threatening a4. But um, yeah, this is uh, still uh, quite balanced actually. I mean, but black could have had this with a. Uh, um, a big pawn center there. So uh, knight d5, interesting. Oh, taking it. Okay. Are we going to grab this pawn? We kind of slowed white down. That, I'm quite looking, liking this for black, but white is 10 seconds ahead here. So um, uh, this is going to be quite tough. I have to say, um, oh, king e4. Okay, we can just move our rook back. That's fine. Oh, that's bad. That's not good. That's not good at all. Uh, now white's um uh this knight is is, is terribly uh and white's got this past h pawn now so oh i was going to say just how well the uh the juniors were playing and yeah. mostly they do but um um but uh yeah this is uh um yeah this is obviously uh this is gone now for um and uh, white's got much much more time as well so um uh, on two out of two sorry moonmaker dennis uh dupuy is on two out of two Oh, okay. We can do a little. Uh, uh, I thought I'd followed him actually, but uh, uh, you do. Maybe he's finished. Uh, I think that was Moonmaker, wasn't it? Oh yeah. Oh no, no, he lost this one. Okay, he's just follow. Lost. Follow. Oh, I've got three L's on follow there. Follow ah. Moonmaker. There we are. Um, I've got him. Uh, we're getting something about Ketty's position. So uh, let's have a look. Um, yeah, this is quite. Um, this is actually quite interesting from um, um, from um, uh, Nina. Uh, you know, I, when when she went ninety two, I thought, you know, this is very a very unusual idea. I mean, it's looking a bit like a Lopez, but it's, it's or or an Italian game, but very unusual just to give White this uh, d five. But the plan, um, well, Nina's played it very fast and uh, threatening now to play d four here. So um, uh, Ketavan's got a little bit of work to do here. Oh, actually, has has Ketavan allowed something nasty? I think takes. Um, uh, let's have a look. Just takes on e6 there. Uh, takes on e6. Knight takes e6. Queen b3. Queen d7. And then I think we can go d4 here. Oh, she's doing it. Yeah, because this uh, this pin is uh, um, is very unpleasant. I mean, we're threatening d5 as well. Yeah. Um, uh, at the very least, um, uh, this is uh, this is going to cost some effort to unravel because takes takes. I was thinking of knight a five just to chase the queen away, but I think we go just go queen c three here, hitting this one, and we still got uh, d takes e five. Now the only maybe the cunning thing we could do is just go back with knight c six, and if d takes e five, we've got bishop b four. That's the only thing I can think of. But this is a. Uh, a little bit scary. Queen d7. I'm I'm pretty sure Nina will go d4. Yeah. She uh, she likes her tactics. Um, let's have a quick look again. We've got a few games going on. Uh, Ragged Airport against Dumpling234. That just feels like a nice name. 
Yeah. Ragged, ragged airport is um is just England. Ragged airport is uh, is two pawns up, but um um but duckling two three four is playing at an astonishing lick. <laughs> But he's losing lots of stuff, but but he's getting some stuff back as well. Only one pawn down now. Um, and uh, well, a4. I mean, actually, I have to say, um, Ragged Airport is doing this very well. Oh, no, no, that's bad. That's bad. That's bad. E2 win. E2 wins on the spot. Oh, Bishop E2 was the way to do it. But uh, yeah, oh, terrible, terrible. Queen A5 check. Yeah. Oh, and Duckling 234 is going to win that. Um, oh, my goodness. So many things happen. Oh, Finley Boycott. Let's see how he's doing. Uh, he seems to be a lot of things up here. Good technique. You put the bishop on b8, block the pawn from going on, so you don't have to do any late captures or anything. Yeah. There also, we are. That's very good technique. Very good technique. How's Killer M doing after that uh, difficult first game? Oh, Killer M is also. Oh, oh, oh! There was mate. There was mate. Oh, 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 oh! Is he gonna? He's but he's got more time. There was countless mates there, but it's going to be a draw. So uh, there we are. Um, yeah, it's, it's a really tough this uh, this uh, this bullet. Uh, who else we got? We've got um, um, Ray Lin here with black, uh, sort of a a perk system. We got the two bishops, so uh, looking quite nice for uh, for black so far. At some stage, you'll be able to emerge, push the knights back, and you should have a, a slight little advantage there. Um, how is um, uh, Harriet Hunt doing as black? Oh, this is uh, quite a typical um, um, F3 uh, sameish. Uh, Harriet playing um, uh, one of the uh, older main lines here. Um, quite interesting for white, really. I mean, this is an extra pawn, not a great one, but it does uh, restrict the black um, pawn on b7. Um, if black gets uh, properly developed, then um, uh, get the bishop there and then get a, a piece onto this square. It can be very unpleasant for white, but until that moment, you know, um, white's got the chances. Now, I'd expect bishop b6. And then we've got to see what uh, Trish is going to do here. Um, they drop c4. Well, you don't really want to exchange off those bishops. That's the the point, um, because then it just means that you lose control over over your light squares. Um, so oh, no. queen, queen b2 is queen b2 is possible um, there. Um, you could go. I oh, know. Sorry, um, c4 is often a reaction, but uh, obviously here you can't do that. Um, queen a4 makes me a bit nervous because we could, uh, oh, sorry, queen a4, um, we could just take and go knight a5 probably, and that would, um, get, uh, get you started. So, um, this is pretty good for black. Uh, queen b1 is another possibility. Yeah, it's just a sharp position. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just one of those, uh, one of those things, but I don't think black's, uh, black's, uh, you know, definitely comfortable there. Um, oh, ho horsey chess against photo chess. We've had that a few times. Um, and it uh, looks like photo chess has got a, a nice position here because uh, one a pawn there. If rook takes e4, then d1 hangs. Oh, wait a minute. We've got um, duckling 234 against against yeah, queen so e2 dragon, dragon here. Dragon. Oh, a d6. Maybe... Oh, he's gone for a trick. Oh, mm -hmm. I thought he's gone for a little trick there. Takes, takes e7 is going to win e8. And uh, duckling has got 20 seconds left. Duckling is fast, I can tell you. Yeah. Um, Adam Collins against Diamondaut. Diamondaut suffering there. My goodness. Um, but who's got? Well, he's, he's certainly not going to win Diamondaut, and I think Adam Collins is going to make this with ease. Wow! Look at that. Great technique. All it says is S M. Sorry. S M. That might be the initials. Uh, sorry, I, I don't know what you're talking about. It, Duckling two three four. I was trying to find out who it was. Oh, okay. And all it says okay. Is M doesn't give a name. It just says S M. Okay, yeah. So, sorry, it's just you're breaking up from time to time, so I, I didn't uh, didn't hear what you what you said there. Um, okay, so that's how is the junior bullet going? Actually, we've got uh, Finlay Bo uh, Adam Collins and Duckling two three four at the top, and this is the big matchup. Finlay Bocott as well on five out of five. Frederick the mate who beat Shiraz uh, Royal in the first round, he's on four and a half, so obviously a dangerous one there. Queen eating dragon with a name like that, you'd expect him to be up there four out of five. Diamondaut, very strong uh, junior player, uh, lost a game uh, to. Uh, um, I think it was Adam Collins just now. Uh, so um, still all to play for. Ooh, Adam Collins getting a quick pawn there. Um, Duckling playing very, very fast. Two quick pawns there. Uh, and swapping off the Queens now. So um, Adam Collins looking odd on favourite there. He's five seconds behind, but uh, 
Um, it must be said that he is playing awesomely fast as well. So, oh, you should keep the bishops. You should always keep the two bishops. Keep those bishops. Oh, that's not good. Knight f4 check could have could have been played. Well, knight h5. Oh, knight h7. Oh, dear me. Dear me. Adam Collins, duckling 234. Now, duckling's got to rely on his uh, exceptional speed, but I think he's he's just losing too many pieces. This is excellent technique from uh, Adam Collins. You're just not going to make that. Wow. A big game there. Big game there. How about Finley Boycott? Where is Finley Boycott? Um... Oh, he has won already against Unicorn Unicorn Zara by timeout. Good lord, that was uh, ha, that was quick. Was that really that from this round? That seems very un unexpected. Um, yeah, these rounds only very very quick. So okay, uh, well that was uh, that was there. So we've got uh, I, I guess no Finley Boycott is still playing. I think that was a. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was uh, against Thing Bing he's playing, but he's 29 seconds up uh, and also quite a few pieces as well. So he's going to move on to six out of six. So the big fight is going to be Adam Collins against Finley Boycott next round. Um, there we are, Finley Boycott won. So two players on six out of six, Duckling, Omit, Atara, Diamondnaut, JH2005, Ragged Airport on four out of five. Yeah, this is... Uh, um, this is going to be dramatic. Have a quick look how uh, Harriet's doing. Um, okay, the bishop's got exchanged. Now Harriet's uh, lining up on this pawn. Actually, she's going to capture that pawn because the knight on d8 is uh, covering c5. She's going to have a better pawn structure. I suppose yeah. the, uh, the the key thing is whether Trisha can uh, get some activity because, uh, yeah, the, the, rooks are, the rooks are quite well placed. I think, uh, you know, Trisha's still doing fine in this position. Uh, we're going to have a worse pawn structure but more activity. Um, how is Ketty doing? Um, oh, and Nina didn't go d4. Um, so um, Ketty uh, has sort of consolidated, got a good position now. Uh, again, a little bit shorter on time there. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's going to be an interesting one. We're going to see how that goes. Um, oh, Roloting against Findy Boycott. So still not playing uh, the... Uh, that's really strange, isn't it? Why aren't, they playing, uh, why aren't they playing each other, Adam Collins and Findy Boycott there? Maybe um, well, no, they can't. They've both got one hundred percent. So hmm. that would be a, that would be a that seems unlikely. But uh, well, maybe uh, maybe it's all being uh, uh, held back until the uh, the final dramatic time. Um, so um, roting against Finley boycott there. So um, uh, oh, Finley boycott. Oh no, sorry, I, I've miscounted the pieces. Oh, knight b five. That's a bit risky and loose. That knight. These pieces are now doing absolutely nothing. I'm afraid. Um, so, um, okay, well, we're going on a bit of a tour there, but obviously black's very comfortable. Uh, we're probably going to play the bishop to, uh, oh, c3. Was that really necessary? I don't know. Bishop b7. Um, we're going to get the uh, the rooks probably doubled on the f-file, I would have thought. Oh, e5. Oh, well, go knight e4 and get one, of the, get one of the bishops there due to this pin. Uh, King h1, that's a little bit passive. Knight e4, still playable. I think the black player missed that one. Okay, knight e2. Uh, King h8, finally. Um yeah, this is a little bit strange what uh, what Black has done, but uh, still looking good. Um, uh, maybe can, why going to put the knight back to to e three, possibly. Oh, but look at this: uh, one second left against forty. He's not going to survive that one there, I'm afraid. And doesn't. Um, where is Adam Collins? I can't see Adam Collins here. I'm just wondering if it's an arena rather than a um, Swiss. Oh, Adam Collins has lost a game somewhere. I don't quite know where, actually. Um, well, did, did he maybe not turn up for this game? I'm wondering. I'm, I think he maybe missed the game because I, I never saw him appear. Um, this is uh, Moonmaker, Dennis Dupuis against a Bora Boy. Now, Dennis is a lot better here, but the question is time, three seconds. <sighs> well, you get the pawn, get the pawn, Dennis, and you can't lose. Oh, he's, he's going for it, 100%. F3. F2. Oh, go. Queen F8, mate. Well done. Didn't play it safe, just went straight for yes. mate. Um, what else do we have? Diamondaut. Two seconds. Oh, Diamondaut has drawn. Looks like uh, that's another one. Diamondaut saved the queen down. There's been a few of those. So Diamondaut is obviously playing very quickly. Um, let's have a look. How is uh, Trish getting on? Uh, this is a hell of a fight, this one. 
Trish against uh, Harriet. Um, so, yeah, Harriet's got a pawn, but uh, very nice activity for White. It's going to be hard to uh, to shake the white pieces there. Um, what is White going to do? Yeah, for White, of course, the question is not clear how you uh, how you sort of um, uh, improve your position. Maybe you should try and uh, move this A pawn up um, a little bit. Um and uh, just try and cramp uh, black a bit. You could also uh, play a move like c4 uh, and try and get the knight to c3. That wouldn't be uh, so bad. Uh, mm. Maybe try and consolidate your king with g3, king g2. That wouldn't be bad. But um, uh, let's have a look what we've got here. Uh, duckling 234. Let's have a look. Duckling 234 against jh. Um, nice position for duckling and even more time as well. Oh, this is, oh, bishop b8. End of, end of game there. Uh, Adam Collins against Killer M. So Adam, oh, uh, 96, oh, Queen F7 sim simply was winning, I think. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's um, that was a bit uh, careless now. Maybe Queen G3 here would uh, be the one for Adam Collins. I think he was a bit shocked by uh, having missed mate in two. Um, yeah. Oh, DC4, come on, Queen G3. That's got to be the move. That still wins. Oh, 97. Um, that looks a little bit slower to me. We're going to take on E7. Queen G3. Um, and go knight g5. The point is you can delay now, and uh, there's a big time advantage. There. Oh, f6, I'm not sure about that one. Well, okay. I mean, you're just fighting now, but 11 seconds only for, for white. This is not easy to finish off. I tell you, I'm not. I'm, I'm definitely never making this with, uh, with white. Um, queen h7, that drops a rook. That's not great. Um, <laughs> knight c8, king c6, rook e6. Oh, a pin, self-pin. That's not great. Uh, knight e7, no, no, knight e7. Uh, uh, oh, queen f5. Well, okay, uh, fine. Um, a5. Oh, queen a7, rookie 7. Uh, White might just make this actually incredible. Oh, that was oh, this was not clever. Oh, he's trying to win, get all the pawns, but he could have made it. He could have made it. He's not going to make it. Oh, queen d6 now. Oh, he's not going to make it. Oh, he should have just gone for mate. He could have made the mate, but uh, yeah, that was the wrong choice from Madame Collins. He loses to Killer M there. Um, have a look here, just a quick look at uh, uh, Nina against uh, Ketty. Ketty down to 18 seconds here. Um, and I'm not sure, is she any better here? I'm not sure, really. Um, this is quite a balanced position, I think. Uh, E4 is a threat, of course. That's uh, one dangerous thing now, with the bishop yeah. covering all the, all the squares of the knights. You've got to find uh, an answer to that. I mean, maybe, uh, yeah, queen c2 or queen b1, I, I think maybe... A little bit nervous about uh, this diagonal, but okay, th this is uh, this is fine. I mean, if, if Black has gone rook d8 here, um, what is White going to do here? Maybe with a move like c4, bishop b3. Uh, also, the only thing about bishop b3 is that uh, you've got to watch out for f4, bishop c5, rook e8. Um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure because it, suddenly uh, th with a bishop on c5, this pawn is weak now, so e4 is quite a dangerous threat now. Um, so it could be that um, uh, that Ketty's just getting a, a little bit on top there. Um, let's have a Baron look at... Uh, Clark is doing well. Olivia Mayton against um, Olivia Smith, uh, which is board two of the women's. Okay. Oh, okay. Emily Mayton uh, here. Uh, just uh, swap, swap the board She's round. Well, actually, what is the position here, actually? Um there's all sorts of threats here, but I guess that White, I guess that White can just play B8 here. Can't uh, I? Don't think there's anything uh, crazy happening. Um, uh, I was wondering about all sorts of uh, checks and stuff, but uh, going to take on there. Going to go Rook takes here, and um, yeah, well, Rook D2. You, you've got to try oh, and keep two the... bishops against one bishop if you swap. Yeah, but we've got an extra pawn as well, so uh, that would be uh, that would be fine. Um, so rook d2 has been played. Um, we should just give definitely give a quick check there because um, uh, Never know. Now it's so king g7 uh, is going to be played, I think. Um, and then probably rook. Oh, oh bishop b3 now. <laughs> bishop b3 ends the game. Well played. Well played, white. Um, very good win against a, a very strong player there. Yeah. Um, let's have a look. Uh, what's happening with uh, this? Is, we'll stay with this one. Oh. This is a draw. So well played, Trish. Excellent game there. Taking a, a draw off uh, off Harriet. Um, Etty against Ketty. Uh, sorry, uh, no, elite player against Ketty. So Nina against Ketty. Um, uh, Black is um, well. Black is. Now. Is is Black better? 
Uh, I guess black is better. Uh, A6 is a little bit weak, but it's going to be hard to get at it. Maybe we should play G3 here with white just to stop this possible F4. Oh, that's a, um, a little annoying move, but not a not a good one, really. I think it was just made to uh, to play a move quickly. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, white's um, uh, in principle, black's in control here. You know, this uh, all this pressure is um, is good, but uh, or maybe white should try and um, um, I would say play G3 and then just try and get a rook to A1 and, and try and pressure this pawn on A6. I think that would be a, um, a good idea. Um, so a G3, I'd definitely say play G3 now. Yes, that's excellent. That's good. And then we're going to play rook A1 and just um, uh, try and annoy black with that threat against A6. Oh, knight B6 coming around to C4. Interesting idea. But I think rook A1 is still uh, decent. Oh, Nina, 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 knight C4. Fallen for the trap there. Oh, queen A2. We've got rook A8. And uh, um, the knight is has dropped. Ah, Ketty uh, setting a, a, a tempting trap there, attempting pawn on a6, and it looks like she's um, managed to... Um, against um, the young player Geometry 2008, uh, who is okay. Eugenia Karras. Um, so Raven is a, is a pawn, uh, is a piece up there. Piece up. Um, so threatening rook takes uh, um, f4 here. Um, yeah, bishop e4 is, uh, is very sensible there. Um, uh, yeah, attacking G2. This should just be a, um, just be a win, okay. just be a win for, uh, for Raylin here. Um, now let's have a, a little bit, a bit of a look at the, um, uh, at the, uh, bullet. We've got Frederick the mate, very fast player against Adam Collins. Um, what is the situation in the junior bullet at the moment? Finley Bocott on seven out of seven. Is that all they played? No, round 10. No, nine I'm out of nine. Got Nine out of Finley. nine, that's right. And um, uh, then we've got Amita Nara, Night Night 101. So Finley really looking to be... Uh, um, uh, and he's won another game as well. So um, that's all looking very, very good indeed. Um, Frederick the Mate uh, is uh, taking down Adam Collins. Adam Collins had a great start. I think five out of five maybe, but uh, now on six out of ten. So um, that's quite... Uh, um, obviously, it's just a, a tough tournament, isn't it? How is Raylin doing? Raylin's uh, finishing off uh, very nicely. Just uh, very active piece. He's got the right coloured bishop for the rook's pawn as well. So no worries about exchanging off rooks there. So um, uh, looking like um, a, a nice win there. Um, uh, what else we've got going? Uh, Ketty still going. Um, Nina doing her best there to uh, confuse stuff. But uh, queen takes g3 is going to be... Uh, more or less the end of it, I think, there. So, um, uh, well fought, Nina. Um, really put uh, Ketty under pressure there, but uh, Ketty coming through. Um, and we've got uh, Chess Queen 960. That's uh, okay. Frederick Aurora. Three, under against, 10, classical, uh, rapid, and blitz, and is now attempting to win the bullet. I suppose it's not under 10s only now, though, so he's against some of the older kids. Best talent so in the country. What's his real name, Peter? We can find this out from the under tens. You say. So Tashika yeah. here is um, oh, material. Curry, of course. Um, no, is that right? Sorry, one minute. It's a uh, material up here. So. Um, uh, is it? Material Curry. up here. So uh, yeah, <laughs> it's material up here. So uh, rook c five. Rook b8. Difficult to uh, to put this one away, really. So um, uh, um, what are we going to do here? Probably we should go queen b2, I think would be a, not a bad idea. Maybe rook a1. Start trying to get the rooks on the on the seventh. You could do it the other way as well and just go uh, rook b2. Back, it just feels right because the queen defends uh, d4, which is nice. And um, um, and then we go uh, rook a1. Uh, queen c3, that's also very nice. Stopping a rook invading because of, uh, of rook c8. Um, uh, rook b2 maybe it's a, it's a it's a decent idea we're just going to try and uh, just got to try and creep forward uh, gradually you know eventually we'll be able to uh, to make it that's not a bad move actually we, we're trying to get in rook c8 here and um uh, if b2 then i think that rook b1 will simply win the uh um will simply win the uh the pawn there bishop a2 but rook b2 so a nice technique from um from Toshika there that was uh, that was well played stay calm and um and kept things going oh uh is this one still going indeed but uh ketty will uh will make that i'm sure 
we've got a we've got a a bullet game going on. Diamond or White against Mojo sixty six. But Mojo sixty six uh, nine hundred and ten rather is um, um, an awful lot of material up. But Diamond Ort is again fast. I mean, it seems like uh, Diamond Ort this time has really put it all on the speed. You know, he says, I, "I'm going to give away pieces. Doesn't matter, but um, I'm going to be fast." Yeah. Um, but actually, uh, he's um, he hasn't really been that it's successful that, without <laughs> with, with, without a. He hasn't been that successful with that approach because um, um, somehow his opponents have... Um, oh, Queen F2 now. Come on, Queen F2. Oh, no, but uh, yeah, no, Queen F8 check. Yeah, he's been successful there. But uh, he's had a couple of games where he's been a queen down and um, and hasn't... Uh, uh, and just you know saved it on material, but it's only been a draw. So, um, uh, but he's on... Uh, he'll be probably on uh, seven and a half out of 11. And they're carrying on here. Uh, this is Killer M. Let's have a look at um, uh, the leader, if we can see him, Findy Bocott, yeah. playing Ashy, 2100. Like it looks like an arena, this one, to be honest. Well, no, it's 15, 15 rounds. Arena, but, but I was just thinking, yeah. But, but, it, but he's playing some very low players here. Which, yeah, which is, uh, that must be right, that that's what they're doing. Surprisingly a little bit, because, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you have Because it's a 15-round event. Rather than just as many games as you can fit in a time. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit strange because he's playing some very low players, whereas I'm sure he hasn't played everyone uh, in this list. It's impossible. He's already um, um, already a, a queen and a piece up here, so uh, that's going to go yeah. quite quickly, I think. How is uh, uh, Ray Linding? Oh, good lord! Um, so she's got uh, this is actually um, yeah, Rook and uh, uh, F and H against uh, against Rook is um, is actually uh, in principle. Um, Normally speaking, a theoretical draw, um, uh, uh, quite difficult to hold. And this one is, um, is obviously not is is not a great version here. But uh, oh, that should have been um, uh, um, that should have been a little bit um, uh, easier, of course, for uh, for Raylin than uh, than this with being a piece up. But uh, probably uh, still favourite to um, uh, to win this one. I would have thought. Um, so uh, we'll we'll play the rook onto uh, onto uh, a two check. Yeah. We'll go h three. Um, I, I studied these uh, uh, an awful lot a, a long time ago, and um, um, I did actually uh, learn them really really well. But uh, I can't uh, just at this speed. I just can't possibly tell you what's uh, <laughs> what's happening here. Um, h three would be uh, would be my uh, my choice here, probably. Yeah, it um, looks like. Has good winning chances here to me, even though it's meant to be a theoretical draw with these two pawns. Um, well, I mean, eventually it becomes a theoretical win, right? Uh, I mean, when the pawns get uh, get get far enough. But um... I'd have been inclined to leave my rook. Oh, I suppose you can always put it back there. Um, oh, this is oh, but this is terrible. Rook takes f three now. Yeah, because you can interpose the rook if you throw in. Oh, Raylin. Oh, but no, 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 no. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. We've got h three. We've got h three now. H three. No, Raylin. No, h three. H three. No, it doesn't work anymore. We just go to g one. Oh, h three was winning, Raylin. Oh, oh dear, Raylin's seen it now. So um, rook a three. So this looks like it's going to end up a draw. Yeah. Oh, good lord. Oh, it's always drama. Always drama. As soon as um, uh, as time gets short, you know it's. Uh, uh, here we've got Duckling Killer M against Duckling Two Three Four. So um, uh, this is round uh, thirteen of fifteen. So um, uh, Killer M, that's Shiraz Royale, and uh, Duckling Two Three Four. I'm not sure who it is, but it's uh, uh, doing very well. Uh, sixth place with uh, eight and a half out of twelve. Killer M actually has moved up nine and a half out of twelve. Started off with a loss. Um, and uh, lost the queen and all that. So, uh, you know, I was thinking, oh, uh, this is all a bit dodgy, but look how he's forced his way back in third place now. Uh, Finley Bocott has already won. My goodness, he's on 13 out of 13 and uh, charging along. Um, I think something's dropped here, but it's not clear. This is a not clear position. Uh, why did the exchange up? But look at those black pawns um, in a... Um, uh, uh, but hard to get them going now. Uh, Bishop E5 played. Bishop F4 risky um i think we could have taken maybe and gone knight b6 there but anyway that's uh knight f6 this one's dropping but d6 is dropping but yeah d5 knight bd7 played um yeah i think you want to keep those uh, pieces on b3 that's a bit loose we could have taken this one 
Um, rook there, rook b1. Well, white probably for choice here, but um, oh, I would have gone rook b4, to be honest. But there's always tricks. No, this is not rook b3. So white's safe now at the very least. Um, oh, could have taken the pawn in f4. Ah, still going to take the pawn in f4. What's the time situation? They're both playing very fast, but Shiraz uh, has got a, um, a crucial advantage here. That is risky. You, sh you should you shouldn't you shouldn't move your rooks close to to people's knights. You should, you should, that rook has to go. Well, h7 would be fine, but uh, uh, a7 is per perfect. That's where it's got to be. And uh, on the a file, a4, for example, ooh, knight e4. That's quite interesting. King g1, rook a4. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, knight g3. Oh, good lord! <laughs> What's happening here? Totally random. Uh, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. H3. What's H3 about? Um, my goodness, me black playing for the win here now. Oh, 95, but no, but oh, it could have taken that. G2 takes, uh, rook b3, uh, king f2, knight h3. Oh, okay, but now, oh, but white's going to win this. White's got more time. As long as you don't get yourself forked. Excellent technique there. Get the king out of the way. Rook check. Oh, you could have taken the knight. Oh, oh, but you, probably it's too much time. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, no, no, Shiraz, it's going to, it's going to, oh, yes, he makes it. Oh, and he wins as well. My goodness, Black didn't have time to take on G six. My goodness, uh, what that is, that is uh, that is just typical um, typical one minute chess. Um, oh, let's have a look. This is a final game. A Georgina, uh, a Georgia headlong against uh, Karina, um, and she is two rooks to one up, which uh, does sound very good indeed there. And uh, the black can also cut off on the side. So uh, looks like that's going to be a, a win. You just can't stop white from taking this pawn. So deep breath and a little bit more concentration. And uh, that's going to be a win for uh, for white. Oh, chess.com. If the person with the rook runs out of time, it will still be a draw. Is that true? Or maybe. But it was the um, person who was the knight. And then uh, was about to recapture the rook, who ran out of time, unfortunately, for them. Indeed. So um, there we are, white one by resignation. Well played. Um, let's have a look. What are we looking at uh, here? We're this looking at. I finished what, when I had a look. Um, what I don't understand. What I don't. What I don't understand here actually is that Finlay Bocock, He's played row loading before. I'd say maybe two or three times. I think it's been set up as an arena. It must have. I, I don't understand this because. Um, that's the I, only way I can explain that. He's just playing. I, I mean, unless uh, my 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 unless my, uh, um, my 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 screen is wrong, but he, I'm I'm positive that he's played the uh, he's played this guy before. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, everything is looking like an arena because it's the top guys aren't playing each other. Yeah, um, exactly, exactly. Uh, let's have a look. We have got uh, Moonmaker Denis Dupuis against. Uh, um, Wait a minute, what, what were the scores? Yeah, because he's playing 13 against two points. It's just... Uh, so that, that's really strange, really strange. Whereas, but, but on the other hand, Moonmaker against uh, Kenneth Hobson, that's eight against eight and a half. So it's all a little bit... Um, anyway, um, uh, here, black is Kenneth Hobson. Is Oh, Queen D2, that just gives the queen away. Oh, it gives the... Oh, he has to take the queen. Wow, what a... Prof, what a wow, that was a... Uh, Black one by timeout. Okay, well on time there. Um, uh, uh, duckling against Frederick the mate, but it looks like Black is going to lose on time there. That's the most important thing. Duckling two three four, getting ahead of uh, Frederick the mate. Um, and what else have we got? Killer M against Diamondort. Diamondort again, a queen down, two queens down. Also down on time, amazingly enough. Oh, yeah, come on, mate him, mate him. Yeah, there we are. Just uh, White uh, doing well. Shiraz uh, keeping up there with 10.5 out of 13. Will that be 11.5 out of 14, actually? Indeed. So in second place now. Great uh, comeback. And the other that. thing, other than Arena, is that it's it's still in age group some way. So the under 10s are playing under 10s players or something like oh, that. Oh, that could be. That could That's be as well, yeah. Theory. Oh, I love this one. Nutter Lad against Adam Collins. So uh, uh, we saw Nutter Lad taking on... Uh, I am Peter Large, Plimsoll, uh, yesterday in the bullet. So um, I seem to remember that Nutter Lad won that game, actually. So um, obviously a strong bullet I player. Because I, I think it's a 15-round tournament. Um, yeah, so, so it's just one or two games left. Last it, round. Yeah, quite worth it. 
interesting one, whether it's an arena. I think it's, it's saying standard round 15 of 15. Indeed. So, so um, yeah. But Hindi, Hindi's playing something with four points, you know, which is which is really weird. It's uh, I don't quite understand these uh, these pairings, but uh, doesn't yeah, matter because they have uh, played fourteen games, it seems. So um, Adam Collins here with Black uh, against Nutterlad. So Nutterlad is uh, thirty three thirty eight, looking pretty good. Um, we've got uh, Knight D seven. Um, yeah, I mean. Um, uh, Five seconds is quite a big advantage, but um, uh, obviously still plenty of stuff to go. The only problem with this position is that uh, Black can sort of wait, play waiting moves quite easily, and White's got to try and work out how to get through with that time disadvantage. So um, it can be a little bit tricky. Queen c7, we can just wait with queen a5, queen c7 if we want. Rook d8, oh, rook d8 to d5 is very nice as well. Yeah, this is going all wrong for all wrong for White. Uh, and now big time advantage. I would have taken with the uh, with the rook on e five, but oh, avoiding the exchange of queens. Yeah, twenty against uh, against twelve. There, this is uh, going to be an easy win for Black. Zajcek against uh, Duckling, two three four. So um, uh, uh, how is that working? Well, Zajcek is ahead on time and ahead on position. So uh, Duckling two three four is uh, going to have his work cut out there. Um, this is going to be about who's fastest on the trigger, and Zajcek seems pretty nifty. Oh, that's that's not a good move. King c7, rook e8 now. Oh, rook c8. Oh, that's gone. Oh, 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 that's gone. Uh, that's gone wrong. But it has cost. Uh, you see, it costs uh, time uh, spotting a blunder and then taking a piece. You know, sometimes uh, a g7 actually has happened now. Queen c8. Mm, yeah, looking good for it again. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Tournament over. Vindy boycott wins with 15 out of 15. Uh, Killer M with 12 and a half and Knight Knight 101. Amazing, amazing stuff there. Congratulations. Congratulations, everyone who took part. Finley Bocott. Shreyas. Knight Knight. Umita Tara. Diamondot. Sidecheck. Sidecheck. King Eaton Dragon. I've seen that name a lot of times. Kingside Rook. YW thirty seven. So uh, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Now, what what time is the next round of the uh, of the women's rapid? Or is it the final Very round? Soon, actually, it's in three minutes. So it's at fantastic. 1 five. Uh, so we and and we we should check in on the seniors too. I'd like to see um, see Keith and all the other That's seniors. A very good idea. Uh, so let me just. Uh, I just close so, so it's Keith Arkell against Graham Waddingham at the top of the over 50s. John Pitcher, Mark Jossie, and Stephen Homer, David Walker. Um, Robert Wilmoth, I think he might have withdrawn actually. He's not paired in this one. Um, Chris Duncan, we should have a look at as well against Conrad Thacker. And Tim Kett against Clyde Frostick. Yeah, lots of good games in the over 50s. So let me just check the over 65 rapids. And that one is paired as well. Uh, Stuart Fishburne against Pat Twomey on top board. Uh, Paul Kemp against Dave Bray. Fantastic. Do you need any links? Okay. Um, well, I'm going to have a look. I'm, I'm just going to um, follow a lot of people. And yeah. um, we're going to see... Uh, uh, we're going to see who we got. Yeah, and the women's rapid uh, is paired as well. We have uh, three people now on four out of five. Um, so that's Ketty, Harriet, and Emily Mayton. Uh, and so Ketty plays Emily on the top board, and Harriet plays Maria on board two. And then we have Olga against Trisha and Olivia against Lara. Ah, oh, let's have a look. Over 50s, rapid. I'm not quite sure what I'm following uh, Keith, actually. So let me just, uh, he's Keith Arkell GM, but, oh, it's just Keith Arkell, actually. Yeah, Keith Arkell. Okay. We'll uh, make sure we get him. I've followed quite a few of the over 50s as well. Yeah, so get Chris as well. He, I know he's not not on the top boards, but he is. Um, oh, he is drunken knight. Oh, he's drunken knight. Okay. 
drunken night without any k's in it just drunken and then ight at the end there we are drunken night well drunken night is already uh um a nice pawn up there okay so, uh, looking uh, looking very good there um oh, you played one of these uh, nasty d3 e4 quick systems against the uh, the dutch very unpleasant if you don't know it and um well he's uh, ended up with a, an absolutely massive we'll position. Look at that position and if the queen yeah. takes e6 obviously then you've got a knight c7 check now this is looking very very good indeed um i've got to have a look at this one because it's spud lover but uh, we always thought it was a Russian lady called Spudlova. So, um, um, and actually Spudlova is uh, as exotic as his name, really, because he played one B4 first move. Mm -hmm. um, actually, this is a very simple system for black, I have to say. This, uh, just uh, taking the pawn and going knight F6 is uh, just, um, um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just actually um, uh, very, very good for, uh, for black, really. I think it's already a slight advantage. Um, there's no need to do anything complicated, you know, against this system. Um, let's have a look. Where is Keith? Keith. I haven't seen Keith yet. Ah, let me see if I see him. Looking for Keith Arkle, but I haven't... Uh, Oops, I spoke to him wrong. I haven't uh, got him yet. Um, we've got Tim Kett against Clive Frostick. Uh, Clive Frostick, he won one of the sections, didn't he? Um, I think yeah, he won the... Yeah, was uh, doing very well. Uh, yeah, he might have won it in the end, the, um, the standard play for the over 50s. Exactly, exactly. Um, then we've got... Um, oh, we've got the uh, the women starting up again there. Oh, we've got a nice little pairing there. Nina Pert against Zoe Varney. Yeah. So, uh, oh, Nina playing aggressively with D4. So this is going to be an interesting one to follow. We've got Ketty against Clarence Park, Eleni Mayton, young player. Yeah, I'd be interested so, to see that one actually. So uh, Emily is um, uh, Emily is uh, started with a uh, um, with a uh, uh, so it's a Maroxi bind position for Ketty. Uh, in principle, quite a nice position where you can uh, grind for quite a few moves as white. So interesting to see how that one goes. Um, where is oh we've got um, uh, Harriet against a uh, photo <laughs> chef. Maria Emlyanova and another Bishop B5 uh, uh, Sicilian. Uh, this time a slightly different one. Maria's playing uh, the knight not to F6, but to E7, um, which is pretty uh, pretty decent uh, way of playing. Um, normally against these sort of systems, uh, actually, um, um, I always played C3 and D4, which um, uh, I think is quite a nice uh, quite a nice way to play. There's also this interesting idea B4, a sort of a, a wing gambit as well. That's um, that's quite good, but um, uh, Harriet's playing it a lot more slowly with uh, with D three and H three there. Yes, um, Which actually, that's similar to how she played it in that the game against Ketty, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And then we've got uh, uh, Olga Letipova against Trisha, secret superstar. Trisha, of course, had a great result there, drawing with uh, Harriet in the previous round. Um, and um, yeah, this is uh, slightly. In fact, this French put the bishop on e6 that early. Um, I guess why it's going to play knight d5 now and just uh, block uh, gum, gum up this square. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, just a, 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 a normal Sicilian out of the uh, um, out of the blocks. Um, are you seeing Keith, uh, uh, Natasha? Because I'm I'm uh, I'm still not uh, I'm still not seeing him. No, and I tried to see his opponent as well and didn't manage. So I guess they might okay. not have started yet. Okay, might be a little a little problem there. We'll uh, we'll see how that uh, how that goes on. Um, I'm a little bit hyped still, actually. I'm still thinking, you know, <laughs> got to commentate everything uh, enormously fast, but it's uh, it's not a it's not a bullet anymore. So uh, we can calm down on uh, on a few of them. Have, have, have a sip of water. <laughs> so uh, good idea, good idea. We'll, uh, yeah, no, I can't. I don't think Keith has started yet. Okay. Uh, let's have a look. Who, who we got? We've got um, elite player. Oh my goodness, this is a, a sharp one. So um, bishop c five, e five, uh, d five is normal in this position. Uh, a very well known and uh, extremely sharp variation. But uh, Zo uh, Zoe went for something completely different. She went d five, he takes d six, f five, and Nina's gone knight g five. 
And the first, uh, my first reaction is, my goodness, this is horrific for black. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not fine, sure. Isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I mean, this might be theory, but um, I think I think this just looks awful. Just, uh, coming in on F7. Water. Yeah, I don't yeah, I mean, there's two threats. I mean, there's just knight e4, and uh, and obviously something can be put on f7. There's queen h5 as well. Yeah. Um, so I think I think this is just uh, I think this has just gone all wrong, really. Yeah. Um, I can't think that uh, that black's got any way to uh, to deal with this. No. Uh, so it looks like a bit of an opening, uh, uh, just a, a misremembered opening, maybe there I from. Uh, actually having a bit of a think now. I, I, I think for sort of there. If you've got some moves yeah. in the wrong order or something. Exactly. We've got um, uh, Raylin against. Uh, ooh, 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 but I think a piece has gone there. Um, it's looking like Tashika's going to pick up the piece on C3. So uh, uh, Raylin has, uh, has lost a piece there, unfortunately. So uh, going to be a tough one to, uh, to come back from uh, from that one. And we've got Olivia Smith against uh, Lara Puttar. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's a, um, a King's Indian attack, this one. Um, and, uh, well, what does white normally do here? Normally white plays uh, h5, goes for h6, and uh, also plays around with a knight coming around h2 to g4 as well. So uh, quite a nice uh, attacking position. Black's been a little bit slow on the queen side. Normally you, you're trying to get in b5 uh, early, really get those pawns um, moving. And um, C4 is possible. It's um, um, I, I think it always I always have the feeling that this rather helps Black because uh, Black wants to open something on the um, um, on the uh, Queen side, and uh, um, yeah, White's then acting on the Queen side, which is sort of helping Black. I think I prefer to keep on going with my with my uh, King side play, to be honest. But um, but C4 is not a not a bad move at all. That's uh, that is uh, completely uh, possible. Have a quick look at Ketty. Oh, Ketty's uh, picked up the exchange already. There, um, I think we. Uh, yeah, there's a bit of a, a bit of an oversight there. Oh, well, actually, Knight D5 was uh, forking this one and this one, and uh, well, Black was either going to lose two pawns, uh, but um, um, has now also lost the exchange as well. So it's exchanging two pawns down. So I think Ketty is uh, is definitely heading for. Um, uh, for a big, um, um, a, uh, a quick win there. So um, how is Harriet doing against photo chess? Harriet is um, just a, a pretty standard um, position there. Harriet's exchanging off the dark squared bishops. Um, solid, I think black's doing absolutely fine. I mean, these bishops are gonna be exchanged, but this bishops, you know, was restricted by the pawn chain. Pardon me, this bishop on these pawns on the, on here are are pretty excellent actually stopping d4 and b4. So uh, in principle, quite a nice position for uh, for black. Um, Black's come out pretty well from the uh, opening there. Looking at the seniors, oh, Chris Chris Duncan really uh, has got the dream position. Um, it's probably going to take on c7 with a knight here and make it even more of a dream position. Yeah, this is a... looking, looking very very good for uh, for white there. Um, I'm going to try oh, and. Uh, I've tried a couple of times. I put Keith on there, and uh, yeah, you know, hopefully we'll uh, we'll see his game uh, uh, popping up sometime. Tim Kett against uh, uh, Clive Frostick, uh, tough uh, struggle this one. Um, six against six. White's uh, a little bit better, I would suppose, uh, because this bishop on a six is a bit passive, and, and White's got control of the uh, of the b file here. Um, probably uh, black is going to look to go something like bishop c4, for example. Um, shouldn't be too bad, you know, should just be uh, uh, about equal uh, in the end, this one. Um, out spanner um, against board in flames. We saw um, board in flame um, before, and I think I've just seen board in flame is a queen up in actual fact. Okay. So, um, uh, seniors. This is uh, seniors indeed, so um, so this is uh, looking pretty uh, pretty promising for uh, for black there. Yeah, Bl uh, DJW sixty against blunder a bit. So that must be Dave Walker. Stephen Homer against David Walker. Um, they're looking very good for black here. A huge square on uh, on f four there for the uh, for the knight and uh, this bishop uh, way offside here. 
Queen's going to come round to D7. I know, I know. I was, I, I did a double take as well. But he's a senior. We've got uh, Chess Balsikas against Necroscope. Philip Mabry uh, is black. And, uh, well, this is uh, a tiny little edge for white. Um, you've got um, um, a black sort of queenside majority, but that's going to be hard to advance. Pawns on both sides, so bishop's a bit better than knight. And uh, you'll have a nice kingside pawn majority. Probably the uh, simplest idea would be to do a sort of a minority attack, try and swap off these two for those three, and then uh, try and play with, uh, with four against three on the king's side. Pleasant for white, nothing amazing, but pleasant, basically. Uh, Drunken Knight. Oh, Chris didn't take on C7, but uh, just castled. Um, and, uh, well, I mean, still obviously a dominating position. Uh, F4 looks uh, looks very nice. Um, yeah, I mean, really anything at all. Uh, I just King remember I my game against Chris Duncan, and I had knights in on D5 and F5. It just really reminds me of it. And now he's got knights in on D5 and F5. But mine was like in 1990 two or 94 or something like that he's it's waited all this time to get his revenge <laughs> with his own knights on d5 and f5 yeah. um ketty so doing the business ketty doing the business here um uh now uh um uh four pawns uh and the exchange up and uh she's going to exchange oh, up queen as well i think much, um hack attack i'm now looking at moves like not your queen takes e5 <laughs> Uh, possible, but uh, but not uh, not advisable. I think Queen D8 uh, wins very easily. Um, so um, well, actually, Horsey Chess has uh, done a pretty good job of uh, getting mm. out of that. Um, what actually happened there? That was really F4. I'm coming on. Yeah, and I mean, it's still it's still uh, it's amazing that Blacks managed to. Uh, maintain uh, some sort of material parity, but knight f4 is still uh, very, very strong there. Oh, bishop g5, also good, also very strong. Um, the little trick there is um, uh, that... Eight on e8. Um, so if... Uh, oh, good Lord, have I... Oh, little analysis board there, so... Um, if uh, takes on here, we go knight takes. If queen takes, we've got uh, rook e8 mate. Um, obviously, after knight g5, we're threatening queen f7 mate. Uh, you could go knight d6. That's the um, the only one. Um, yes, and it's, to work there. and uh, it's not quite clear how, uh, um, how we're delivering final mate here, actually. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, Zoe's very good at surviving. She's uh, an incredible survivor. Um, uh, so, yeah, I mean, I think uh, she's, uh, I mean, she's still, it's still look, looking nice for white, but um, it's certainly not, um, there's no force mate now. So, uh, Nina's still got quite a bit of work to do there to uh, to finish this one off. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look. Slow Sloth 26 against uh, Secret Superstar. That's Trisha. Oh, sorry. I even had it the right way around there. Um, Olga Letipova against uh, Trisha, so a pretty typical Sicilian there. Um, black threatening uh, b4, white may well go knight d5. Um, so um, yeah, I mean just uh, um, nothing much, uh, nothing amazing happening there. Just a, a typical Sicilian should be fine for uh, for black. Should be fine for white. Queens are getting exchanged now. Um, there's a. a there's a um, a very famous game of uh, I'm even wondering whether we're following it actually that um, uh, of Ivanchuk's uh, Ivanchuk's against Anand where Anand did some concept like takes takes and then took with a G pawn on F6 and then just uh, pressured these uh, these pawns here um, it was a, a, an amazing game actually and uh, was very very strong so you could do something a, a little bit similar there um, or you could uh, just uh, take off there and go Bishop D7 and then uh, well, you've got all ideas like h5 and uh, and f5. Again, should be a, a pretty decent version for black. And uh, Ketty has actually won that one. So, um, ah, well played, well, played Ketty. Good comeback. Well played, Ketty. Um, how is uh, Harriet playing? Oh, actually, this looks uh, first uh, thought there is that White's suddenly doing very, very well here um, because this pawn on c5 is very, very weak. And uh, White's played c4. If you don't take that one, then, I mean, actually, queen a5 just wins it. Um, if you do take on c3, 
and queen takes c3, and uh, well, you're going to be hard pressed to defend it. So uh, I think you have to take on c3. I think that's the only option. But um, uh, yeah, this is oh uh, well now now this is really really clear because uh, queen a5 is going to be very unpleasant for um, uh, for black here, and uh, there's, there's no real counterplay for uh, for black. Um, I mean, you can play queen g3, but uh, but then I'll go king h1. And you don't have enough to create a mate there. And uh, and well, this one's coming in. This one's coming in. So uh, looking very good for Harriet as well. Oh, Chris uh, Duncan has has won there with a oh, what a what a visual mate there. Oh, <laughs> look at that. That was um, nice. <laughs> um, a brilliant hack attack queen sacrifice there. <laughs> Fantastic. Ninety six mate. Very nice indeed. Nice game by Chris. So. Um, uh, Olivia Smith against uh, Lara Puta. Um, yeah, quite a, quite a murky this one. Um, yeah, White's uh, uh, yeah Queen on E4 is a little bit odd there, a little bit exposed. Um, Black's uh, um, yeah got some nice defense of the uh, of the king side here. I think I probably prefer to be to be Black in this position mainly, uh, probably, but um, uh, but still, you know, very unclear. Still, lots to to go ahead there. Nina against uh, um, uh, Zoe. Well, Zoe is doing an amazing job of surviving here, and um, well, Nina's got to be very careful now because uh, um, I think when when we go uh, Bishop D seven, um, we're going to threaten stuff like Queen E four and Bishop C six, and uh, it, it's not. It might not be um, uh, uh, Zoe's king that uh, that's in trouble, but Nina's. So uh, this is looking quite. Uh, uh, this could be a little bit of a turnaround. I'm uh, I'm afraid. Um, yeah. Uh, what have we got? Let's have a look at the um, at the uh, um, seniors. So, uh, Clive Frostick with black against Tim Kett. Oh, we've got a an interesting uh, position here. Well, I think um, uh, there's a, a horrific pin here, which you're just never going to get out of. Um, so, um, I'd say something like, um, "Ooh." Um, Maybe maybe we just go oh yeah rookie seven I, I'm I'm thinking we just go we could just go king g seven actually was what I was thinking and I thought that was just going to be a uh, um, a win for um uh, for black um, I think if we just go king g seven then uh, and then you just wait a bit and you, you're just not going to be able to get out of that pin so looking very good for Clive uh, Frostick there against uh, stronger over sixty fives is still going as well that's um Seachall. Um, it's Stuart Fishburne against Pat Twomey, um, and uh, Black's building up some pressure on um, a D3 pawn there. Indeed. So how many pawns? Uh, it's six against six. Okay, so uh, we've got pressure against D3. We've also got this little threat of Bishop A4 uh, in the position. Oh, actually, uh, we can go Bishop A4 already, actually, and just uh, uh, win the exchange. So uh, that's looking very good for uh, uh, for Pat there. Actually, uh, still Duncan's final position deserve a tweet. Uh, yeah, could do. <laughs> yeah, we could do that. Um, Drunken Knights. Let's have a look. Up, brilliant final flourish from a drunken knight. In online British chess chips. There we are. Up. There we are. Fantastic. 
Um, let's have a look what else we've got. Uh, Harriet, uh, it, ooh, it has indeed been um, um, attacked a bit, but it's looking quite, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's not looking like uh, there's there's too much really that uh, the black can really do. Um, Knight e6, threatening mate on g7. I guess uh, Emilia, Ma Ma Maria should play rook b7 here. So obviously queen b7 just allows mate. Uh, queen h6 is ingenious. Um, I think uh, Queen F4 now will uh, will just kill the uh, the counterplay and give uh, Harriet the win there. So um, that's looking pretty good. Um, Nina against uh, um, against uh, uh, Zoe there. Yeah, this is looking uh, looking good for uh, for Black now. Amazing turnaround after uh, such a good attack from uh, from Nina in the beginning. Uh, but Zoe's a very, very, a very, very tricky and tough player. So uh, we've seen her saving positions, uh, difficult positions, left, right, and centre. And she's been playing a lot of chess, mm. uh, lots and lots of events here. So um, she'll be playing the um, the last round of the championship in a in a, in a an hour's time as well. So well, uh, gosh, that's a, that's a big day, really, because they they started at ten a.m. today, and it's a tough so, tournament today. Indeed, indeed. So um, let's have a look. We've got um, Spud Lover, <laughs> Spud Lover, against Late Late for the Sky. That's Mark Page. What's the current situation? So, um, well, uh, Black is a uh, oh oh good lord, uh, that's a bishop on a one. So um, Black is the exchange and a pawn up. Um, so looking good value there. Um, yeah, White's got um, potentially a nice bishop, but there's too many weaknesses around his king, really. So uh, that's looking very, very good for uh, for Black. Um, Rook G1, probably the best defense, but um, but quite passive there. Rook G6, Bishop H3 is threatened now. Um, Mariner 235 against Heisenberg. So that's uh, Paul Kemp against David Bray. What have we got here? It looks like to me like uh, black is a piece up here. Uh, queen b7. Now, white's got a, a few pawns for it, but um, not really enough. So I think a move like knight c4 and um, and black will be... Uh, um, oh, wait a minute. We've got a... Ha! We've got a threat against h7. So that's uh, a little bit more shocking than I'd realised. So black doesn't risk it. Oh, I think black could have risked that. Um, wait a minute. If we'd gone... Uh, I mean that wasn't uh, that wasn't a mate, was it? Uh, oh, uh, but Black has very very little time there. Actually, I just seen so. Uh, but um, I think Knight C4 um, takes check. I mean, we just come here, you know, and we're uh, we're still surviving. There's no uh, no immediate mate there. But um, uh, unfortunately, I think that. Where were we looking? Marin against Heisenberg. Black only had six seconds left, so... Uh, um, oh, I'll tell you what happened. Keith must have taken a quick draw. It's, it's showing, showing as a draw. Oh, okay. You must have just, just agreed it very quickly. and um, Because I suppose that then he goes into the last round. He'll still be half a point clear, depending on the result of John Pitcher against Mark Jossi. Uh, okay, which, which game is that? That's uh, so board two. Let me just find the name of John Pitcher. He is Bourneville Woodpusher. Oh, dear me. Uh, I don't have him, but uh, uh, and, and the other, Mark the other... is um, Rugby Club. Oh, okay. That's easy. Yeah. So Keith would ideally want in that game a, um, a black win. Yeah, I don't. Um, I'm following rugby club, but I don't have his game, so that's probably finished as well. I think. Finished, yeah. Um, let's have a look. Let's go through. So Marin against Heisman. This is now looking very good for White. Um, late for the Sky, uh, looking very good for uh, for Black here for um, for Mark Page. Um, Coventry one two three against Michael Marshall. Um, oh, quite uh, uh, quite unclear there. Um, G5, a bit dramatic to uh, free the rook. Uh, rook c7, queen g2. Well, pl still plenty of play in this one. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would say that black is better here, but um, um, just a couple of, um, of, of things to, you've got to tidy up really, because uh, um, this pawn on e6 is hanging. So you'll probably need to protect that before you can really start getting your pieces active. Well, I don't know, actually. I think this is, uh, yeah, this one's going to run and run, I think. 
Um, slow sloth, Olga Letipova against uh, Trisha. Trisha is a uh, is doing quite nicely, I think, uh, in this position. So pawn up. Uh, this one might be going, but um, but then h5 is very hard to uh, to hold. And actually, um, well, rook g7 is the threat now. Um, so we've got to be a bit careful about that one. Um, well, actually, come to think of it, the black king is a little bit awkward. Um, maybe we should just play a move like rook h7. Ooh, bishop e7 is a bit risky. Uh, we'll go rook g7 check. Uh, king e8. Um... Rook g7 check, king e8, and then we might go bishop f4 or something. Yeah, I think bishop e7 was was wrong. I think rook h7 was uh, was probably the move. This is now quite uh, quite tricky. Um, I guess bishop. Oh, rook g6. No, 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 not rook g6. Yeah, because now black's gone bishop h5, and all of a sudden all of these are uh, are in trouble. So uh, a bit of a turnaround there, and it uh, looks like Trisha is going to win as well. Yeah, very uh, like her game. Uh, smoothie against photo chess. Exactly. Fantastic. Um, slow sloth. Uh, yes, that's the one we're looking at. Uh, Olivia Smith against Lara. Got to a rook ending. This is a, a very nice rook ending for uh, for black. I think uh, a5 now. And uh, well, or even, yeah, rook c1 to c2 check was also strong, but this is excellent. And uh, well, black, you would expect black to win that. Elite play against horsey chess. Knight b5. Uh, Going to uh, uh, threatening a little fork on here. Um, I think there's a few moves. Um, uh, King d7 is quite uh, quite natural here. Just to um, um, a7. That would be ironic yeah. if that gets trapped because you know Zoe lost a couple of pieces on a7. Indeed, yeah. But then Bishop d3 after yeah. Yeah, King d7 is uh, is good. Um, uh, I mean, we can also take on h3 after as well. I mean, that would just also be very very strong. So uh, looking very good for horsey chess. Um, Sri Rao against um, uh, um, Els Elsbieta Vine. Uh, oh, what's happening here? Knight g4. Um, yeah, that's going to be a, a nice ending for black. Uh, rook, pawn, rook ending, rook pawn ending, a rook up. Um, the white king's going to be cut off on the back rank. Good chances. I mean, a clear advantage. Uh, always, uh, you're always uh, unsure whether these are actually winning or not, but uh. You're right, Mark. Mate and forking king and queen. That should definitely be more than one point. You can't do it any better than that, after all. Karina against uh, Rida. Um, this is looking pretty good for um, uh, for white, of course. Queen b7 to f3. That would be my um, uh, my favourite way of playing, just to get the queen nice and close and offer the exchange of queens. Uh, c5 is also not bad, but um, uh, well, queen e4 check now would be quite uh, quite good. I think that would be a good a good little thing to do, um, and then afterwards to play h3. Uh, that would be very strong. Um, queen c6 is possible. Um, I think that maybe White's going for the mate now with queen e8, check, and king h4, only move, and then afterwards um, we are going to play g3, and that is going to be um, that is going to be a mate now, g3. And king h3, we've got queen h5 check. So that should be an uh, uh, easy win for uh, for white, and it's been played. King h3, only move, and queen h5 mate. Lovely little finish there. Uh, Doggy Dalmatian against um, uh, Georgia Headlong. Uh, very short of time, both players. 17 seconds against 12. Um, black better, uh, going to win a pawn. Uh, these two are hanging. So um, uh, rook a2, that's uh, probably, probably the right one to take. I was actually kind of tempted with rook c4, but um, uh, okay, rook d3, rook c2. Uh, yeah, this one, again, very hard to, uh, to hold here. Knight d6, but now I think we can play a5. That would be a uh, – or knight c5 maybe would also be a, a good move. I said the uh, knight a5. I think rook b3 could maybe be a bit, a little bit uh, annoying here. But knight c8. Um, well, we can always uh, uh, take this one with uh, uh, like this. Will be a nice pawn up as well. So good chances here for uh, for black to um, to win this one. Uh, just black is very very short of time, so that's going to be uh, a little bit scary. Um, ooh, 
Ed Goodwin against Michael Marshall. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a big pawn here. So Michael Marshall picking that one up. Um, Olivia against Lara. So Olivia is two pawns down in this uh, um, rook ending. Not much time left, but uh, um, I think, yeah, black should really just go king, oh, king g5. Okay, it's possible. Uh, just um, it's always nicer to keep your pawns together, really. But uh, king g5 should be very strong here now. Um, rook d4. We should go rook e3 to g3. That would be the simplest. And then afterwards, we'll, um, we'll just... Um, uh, well, e5 actually would have been very strong as well. That would have won the pawn straight away. But this is good enough. Rook takes g4 and uh, uh, a fairly routine win. A right-coloured rook's pawn for the bishop, I'm afraid, for uh, for Zoe. So Nina will be uh, going down in that one, I'm afraid. Um, Has anyone got to look at the ages of the people playing in the rapid play for the over 65s? And so on board one, actually, White had a five-year advantage in that Good Lord. well i guess it's an advantage if you're the younger player um so white was born in 1955 and black pat twomey um who is on currently on four out of five he was born in 1950 so he's actually 70. yeah it's five years more experience though so right. um you know. exactly it's uh, uh you never know uh oh let's have a look um uh so uh elsa bit of vine I'm trying to dig out the old lines that have been forgotten that those extra five years could really count so let's have a look Lindsay uh pion uh look, looking like she's uh um oh wait a minute actually wasn't uh oh this has turned around uh because black was a pawn up in this one but uh now a piece down so um uh and this one is not going to be this one is uh, looks like it's going to be a win for White. This one, although swapping off the pawns is a little bit uh, like that's a little bit strange. Um, Going to need some good technique from White to uh, to finish this off, but uh, should of course uh, this should be a win. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, how long have they? I can't quite see the clock times on it. How long do they have left? How long does White have? Forty against nineteen. So uh, White's got a bit more time there. Forty seconds to work this out. Yeah, it's not. Um, it's not oh, trivial. It's not though. Yeah. Ah, uh, this is not good though because now we it's can just easily blockade. Oh, key well. three. Key three simply was uh, okay. okay. It's a bit strange, but uh, okay. Oh, 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 oh! Don't do this. You've got a, a great square on f four for the night. That's the one you need. That's very good. That's very good. Um, but now we're going to have to work out how to. Um, Gonna have to work out how to do this. Uh, knight h5. This is not uh, this is not completely easy, especially now you've no. let the king uh, you've let the king come around here basically because uh, it's not easy to get the king. Uh, um, what do you want? I Maybe mean, want your knight on e uh, g5 to stop the king going back to e4. Uh, yeah, then we have got king e5 and we'll be threatening f4, so it's a little bit. Uh, this one's a little bit. This one's a little, a little bit awkward, actually. Oh no! no. Uh, F four now. F four draws. F four uh, draws. Oh. oh dear me, dear me! It wasn't actually trivial to uh, to, to win it. Mm -hmm. uh, you would have needed a little bit of uh, time there, but uh, it's it's fair enough. I mean, uh, Black was a pawn up for most of the game, so uh, probably a draw is a is a fair result there. Um, okay, so Lara... into the final round, Harriet's going to be half a point clear. It looks like because um, she won her game. And uh, Katie and Emily Mayton, no, Katie won as well. Sorry, apologies. It'd be level with five points, Katie and Harriet, but they have both played each other, uh, so they will have to keep an eye on each other's games, um, or just play for the win, which I, I, I guess they really ought to do. Um, so who will they be playing, Katie? I'm not sure about this one now. Actually, it looks uh, this looks like it could be a draw. This one and Lara. Uh, oh dear. And Nina. Yes. So maybe it's actually um, uh, Maria is the name I'm looking for. This one looks like it could be a draw. Actually, so um, uh, this um, this rook and two. Uh, the, the key thing always in these things is to uh, keep the G pawn as a shield for your king. You don't want to move your G pawn too far up because then white gets all these checks, yeah. um, and um, and that's happened here. So uh, 
Um, I, I think this is probably just going to be a draw because if the king comes over here, then the rook starts attacking the the, the h pawn. So uh, ah, miss chance there, miss chance. So that's looking like a, like a draw at the end there. So what time is the next round? Uh, oh, pardon me. What time is the next round, Natasha? It should be two thirty. So I think we have ten minutes. We could uh, have a little break for ten minutes, or see. Should we take a see? yeah. We'll we'll take a, We'll take a, a little break, and we'll we'll come back in um, um, in about uh, seven or eight minutes. Yep. I'm going to eat some chocolate biscuits. What are you going to do, Natasha? I'm going to make a cup of tea. Well, actually, I've got a cup of tea here, but I need to warm it up. I, Fair I, enough. My family always laughs because they always find these. I've warmed up these cups of tea in the microwave, and then I've forgotten. So they go into the microwave, and there's always this cup of tea that I've warmed up, and then and then forgotten all about. But this time, I'm going to warm it up and actually drink it. Fantastic. Well, that's a good plan. So we will be back in about uh, four or five minutes, maybe a little bit longer, uh, ready for the uh, half past uh, two start of the, uh, of the last round of the women's uh, rapid and the seniors rapid. So join us then. See you soon.
There we are. Put uh, Natasha back on. Maybe before she was ready. Hello, everyone. We are back, we hope. So um, uh, let me just uh, put the board on here. Board on there, and hopefully we are all ready to go. Do let us know if you can't hear us or something strange has happened. Uh, always possible when you <laughs> stop in the middle, but uh, should be all right, I hope. And we've got a great game here. We've got uh, actually they've uh, uh, they've started already, and we've got uh, Chris Duncan against Keith Arkell. Hello. So, uh, oh, let me just. I've just got to close my door here. Otherwise, the whole world. Otherwise, the whole world will hear what we're doing. So, uh, uh, Chris Duncan against uh, Keith Arkell. Let me just uh, put that one on around like that. Um, Hi there. All... Hey, Natasha. Hi. Yeah, we're online. We're live. So, um, um, yeah, so B3 here from, uh, from, uh, from Chris. Keith uh, has actually played a, a symmetrical... Um, um, a symmetrical oh okay Ooh. okay you don't hear me natasha okay well i don't know can uh, uh somebody in the in the chat can you hear me i suppose i would say uh off, off the stream and on again just to see if that fixes the sound one moment just asking whether people can hear me or not it was all working hello Hi. natasha we can hear you it's all fine there so uh it's just uh yeah everyone can hear me natasha so uh Okay, that's good, Mark. That's good. That's uh, that's important. So, yeah, B three knight g four. So this is a um, um, a Maroxi uh, bind structure. Um, knight g four attacking the um, uh, the knight on c three, bishop on g seven, combining with the queen. Uh, quite an aggressive one there. And we've also got some uh, some ideas like queen b six or queen c five with knight f two. I think actually that Chris is in a little bit of trouble here. Um, so, uh, just trying to get Natasha back on the stream because she can't actually hear me, which is, uh, obviously, uh, very, very grim, but, uh, um, but yeah, if everyone else can hear me, then I, then I must be doing it, uh, all right. I would have thought, um, so, uh, Natasha's just, uh, having a little go. I can hear Natasha actually. So it's just, uh, yes, I'm doing it without the, uh, Headphones, because I can hear you that way. Okay, that's great. That's lovely. So, uh, Rook AC1, Queen B6 check now. And, uh, well, I think uh, uh, Keith is picking up the exchange here, because Knight F2 is Hi. coming in. And we've got this um, we've got this uh, famous little trick coming up, of course. I'm sure you all know. So, Rook takes F2, Queen F2 now. And, uh, yeah, already looking winning for uh, for Keith. So, a very good start for uh, for him. Um, and that will mean he wins the um, over 50s outright if he goes on to convert this game. Indeed. Uh, now, let's have a little look at um, uh, at what's happening on the top boards. Um, we've got uh, Horsey Chess, Zoe Varney against Ketavan. Uh, a C3 Sicilian, that's what uh, Zoe always plays. Bishop F4. So, um, uh, yeah, you know, we're going to see how... Uh, how that one turns out. I quite like, I always like white in these positions. I just think white always gets a slight advantage. Uh, always surprises me that black players, so many black players, you know, choose to do this, but uh, because there are, there are really a lot, a lot of different ways for black to play against the C3 Sicilian. But, um, but okay, that's um, uh, quite interesting. I'm just seeing whether I can see Harriet at all. Yes, it has started. Uh, so it's Clarence Park against NAHGUAV87. 
Um, but you might find yeah. Clarence Park easier to find. I don't know why I, I don't know why I'm not uh, seeing that, but um, okay, I will do. Uh, uh, King of Engine Attack, White has played. Uh, what is it? It's Clarence. Clarence Park. Clarence Park. There we are. Um, so it's um, yeah. Uh, so sort of a yeah, so, sort of a retty really. I mean, King's Indian Attack. That's when you go e4. And this is uh, White's here gone c4 takes d5. So um, uh, very often White's going to play for e4 here. Just uh, and uh, yeah, Luke McShane has played this um, as White. Uh, a few few strong players have done this, and it's quite uh, a slightly difficult, uh, slightly annoying for Black to deal with. Bishop c5 is a good move, uh, putting the bishop already on this diagonal. So if White goes e4, then the bishop's already. Uh, um, quite aggressive. Um, queen b3 is quite a common line here for white now. Um, uh, the idea being that um, after queen b3, if you go bishop b6, I go knight a4 and just uh, uh, pick up the um, uh, the bishop pair. If you go queen b6, um, I play the subtle queen c2, threatening knight a4, um, uh, forking the queen and the uh, and the bishop there. So uh, it's uh, it's fine, you know. It's it's fine for black, but it's probably a, a little a little advantage for um, for uh, for white there. Yeah, and uh, and 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 black will be wanting to play for the win here um, because uh, you've got Ketty on the next board. They've both got the same number of points, um, and so I, I imagine both of them will be playing to win their games. Exactly. So we've got um, uh, here, this is uh, photo chess, Maria Emlianova against Lara Putar, and um, um, uh, a bit of a sharp Grunfeld here. Uh, some, um, some, yeah, quite a few uh, pieces uh, um, all looking at each other here. Knight c6, interesting from black, um, threatening knight b4. So I guess that, um, that a3 is going to come in. Um, and then maybe Black's just going to go for uh, for e5 here. You know, we're going to have a quite uh, a bit of a typical uh, sharp Grunfeld explosion in the centre there. Um, what else are we looking at? Um, we've got Roxolana against elite player Nina Pert, who was uh, had such a good position against um, uh, Zoe Varney, but uh, well, Zoe escape artist Zoe Houdini, as uh, Mark called her. Um, managed to get out of that one and um, and even win. Um, this is now Nina Perk playing very popular um, knight f6 Karakhan. You accept uh, these double pawns. Uh, bad for the ending, but uh, you get lots of open play. And it was uh, funny. It was first played by Korchnoi quite a long time ago, 1970s, and uh, and nobody really picked up on it um, until recently. And uh, one of the main players of it has been uh, David Howell, a British Grandmaster. Who's played it an awful lot, um, and he taught it to um, uh, to, uh, to Magnus Carlsen, who's played it a lot. Strangely, though, without that much success, um, he uh, the game that ended his winning streak, his uh, his not losing streak rather, his 110 game uh, not losing streak, was actually played in this opening. And uh, I think David was commentating. He he revealed that uh, that Magnus has said after the first time he played it, "I'll never play this system again." But uh, but he did and uh, and uh, and lost it. But it, it, it's sort of um, um, it is quite uh, difficult for, for white in actual fact. Uh, black gets a lot of activity and um, it, it's just very tricky for white to keep a lid on it. I um, um, yeah, so uh, very good system to play with black at the moment. Um, and the, I mean the Karakhan's pretty pretty solid opening uh, and uh, you know plenty of stuff you can do, but not as um, not as uh, much theory as um, as the um, uh, the Knight of Sicilian or something like that. And your king's a little bit safer. I mean, these pawns always remind me a little bit of uh, um, of exchange chess, you know, where when you get a pawn, you just put it in front of your king in order to uh, to make it super safe. So um, these aren't invulnerable. Whoops. Oh, right. oh, these, 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 aren't, these aren't invulnerable, but um, but they are, uh, uh, they are pretty good all the same. Uh, let's have a look. Trisha uh, against Olivia Smith. Um, so uh, Trisha is going for this e4 again, and I think she could probably do it um, again, to be honest. Um, e4 looks quite uh, quite strong. She already had a game uh, against um, a young junior, um, a very eventful game, which she eventually won. Pardon me. And I think that, um, that uh, she's probably going to do the same again and go e4 here, which should be a, a slight advantage for White. I mean, these knights 
are great um, if you actually manage to stop e4. Uh, but if you don't manage to, um, then uh, e4 to e5, oops, e4 to e5 is uh, is a very unpleasant uh, threat, of course, and those knights are are completely wrong. Um, what else have we got? We've got uh, uh, Ella Vine, so that's Elspieta Vine against uh, Rosalyn. And Rosalyn has played a Sicilian with uh, um, a Paulson Sicilian. And that's quite a sharp, a sharp struggle here. I mean, White's going to play B4 here. And um, I mean, it's all about this diagonal at the moment. And uh, White is going to play B4 and chase away that bishop on C5. And um, um, yeah, and then Black's going to have to have an answer for, to that. So um, that's a little bit we actually do with Black here. Um, because, for example, if we just play a, a simple move like this, then b4, um, if a bishop moves away, we've got a, a big knight takes e6 there. Yeah. So um, um, so then you'd be forced to do something like this. But you don't really want to give up this bishop when you've got, uh, you know, all these uh, dark squares here and all your pawns on light squares. So we need to find something um, something clever um, here. Um, we could play queen a7 uh, to meet b4 with... Uh, with bishop b6, it feels a little bit odd. Queen is a bit off isn't it, if you do that? Yeah, but it's it's um it's sort of possible. Um, otherwise, I'm wondering what else we could do. We could try e5. That's a bit um, um, slightly unusual and uh, a bit aggressive, but maybe not bad, actually, because uh, if, we, um, if we take on their knight takes, then um, we kind of solidified our stuff. Queen g3. Uh, oh, actually, we've got this fork, haven't we? Sorry, I'm completely missing this. So, uh, so that's actually that's actually a, a very important point. So, e five. What knight f five or something for white? Yeah, then I'll take on e three and um, um, yeah, uh, knight takes e three. Maybe e takes f four and uh, and black's to, black's in good shape there. So I think e five would be a good uh, a good I'm thing not to do there. E four can black aren't meet that with actually knight d four. Uh, that is possible, but we'll we'll take back with a C takes D four then, and uh, and have a decent uh, uh, a decent center. So um, it is possible indeed. So B four, oops. So um, uh, let's just say a random move. Um, B four uh, knight takes D four. Uh, we could do that. I mean, we could go knight takes D four as well. Um, then we might still have one of these discovered attacks. Um, or we could just uh, uh, take with the pawn on there. Um, and depends a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, if we go knight g3 here, it's quite a nice center for white, really. You know, it's going to be quite hard for black to uh, to get at it. But, um, but I think knight d4 is definitely a better move than, uh, than bishop takes d4. You're absolutely right, Mark. Um, geometry. That was uh, geometry. That was... Uh, uh, we saw her playing earlier. Oh, so two juniors here. Um, uh, Eugenia against uh, Tashika. Yes. Tashika we've seen play an awful lot, but Tashika's got a good position here out of the Grunfeld. Um, this queen is very powerful on b3, and uh, queen b3, knight b3 is not at all nice for um, for uh, for white there. But I don't know what else you can do apart from queen b3, actually, uh, because um, whatever you do, white's gonna, black's going to get into this b3 square. That's uh, an absolutely beautiful... Um, uh, beautiful uh, um, Grunfeld there. Oh, I've lost my connection to, uh, to uh, chess.com actually. It logged you off for not, not no, being no, no. there for two seconds. Oh, it's possible. Maybe where's this uh, connection lost trying to reconnect? So uh, uh, that's it. I've still that's got a... it, so I could share. Oh, well, wait a minute. I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll just uh, um, start off again. Tournament over, my goodness! I think that's referring to another. <laughs> that's referring to another tournament, hopefully. So, um, uh, yeah, I'm back. Uh, I'm back in there. So, um, secret superstar Trisha against Livy. Uh, Trisha has managed to get in e5. Uh, Olivia Smith counterattacking against uh, b2 and d4. Um, yeah, interesting. I, th I think uh, I'd be tempted with white. Just to play a move like uh, uh, like rook e2, uh, get the rook off this diagonal, um, uh, and then we're going to play just a3 afterwards and uh, um, and chase away the queen. 
and uh, this is looking really really good for um for uh, um for white here so trish has got a really good position here um so um yeah she's been quite successful with this uh, opening system uh photo chess against lara g where we had a bit of an explosion here um but it looks like um uh, maria has managed to get a pawn up um a pawn up just one pawn Two pawns up, actually. So that's been a really good deal. And the great thing is that this bishop's on f4, so it's stopping uh, a rook coming to b8. So, um, uh, yeah, Maria's also attacking this pawn on e7. So it's it's looking quite tempting here. I think that what Lara should maybe do is go bishop f8, okay. threatening this e5 move, um, and just, well, just then tr try and see what, um, um, what White can do against that. Rook a7. Um, also not bad. Threatening rook b7. The only problem is that when you go rook b7, um, then the a4 pawn will hang. So you're not going to win two pawns, only one. Um, I mean, maybe a good move for, for white would be to put something on c1. That's very natural. Rook c1, just uh, exploiting this one. And uh, it's looking very good for uh, looking very good for white here, looking very good for Maria. Um, let's have a look at... Uh, we've got uh, in the seniors now, we've got... Uh, David Walker against uh, uh, Tim Kett. Um, actually, have I, have I lost uh, Keith here? Uh, yeah, Keith has already won, actually. So. Keith. No. Yeah, Keith, uh, Keith, Keith has already won. So um, uh, he's, uh, that, um, that went very badly wrong for, uh, for Chris Duncan there. So, um, oh, this is, uh, could be nasty. Uh, so uh, the Bishop on H3 has been trapped. The only question is, can White profit from it? Because... Um, uh, Black has actually some rather nasty uh, back rank threats here. Actually, <laughs> these are really nasty back rank threats. How on earth is White yeah. going to try and deal with this? Um, yeah. So I think you're going to have to do something like, um, we've well, got a few ideas. Um, which two two. Looks um, well, but that looks that looks a little bit wrong. I mean, you could go Rook D2 and, um, uh, and then try and... Uh, uh, and if they go Rook B1, you go Rook D1. Yeah, but, um, but obviously we go rook b2, though, and uh, um, I'm a bit concerned about what's going to happen here. Oh, my goodness me. It, it looked like, you know, White was uh, nicely in control, you know, and uh, trapping the bishop, And uh, but but here it's uh, um, um, it's quite, um, yeah. yeah, quite quite tricky, actually. I would fancy that, no. Um, so rook fb8. Yeah, no, this is... Uh, this is tricky for uh, for David. So uh, he's gone rook c1, which is uh, oh, that's maybe that's probably maybe cleverer because if we go rook b1, he's going to go rook fc2 there. That's how he's going to try and uh, deal with it. Um, um, but um, I don't know. I mean, uh, we could uh, we could throw in a, a, a rook b2, or maybe we should just take off there and then go rook b2 afterwards. And uh, um, well, I mean, uh, Black's got uh, at least a draw there, and. Uh, much much more i think you know i mean uh um so uh no looking pretty good um Harry Harry Hunt, it's not at all clear um they're, they're going to run very short of time i think at some point uh, so harriet black, yeah harriet black here against um uh, emily Mayton, and uh, yeah. indeed i mean uh white is i'd say clearly better here two bishops nice pawn center um this is um yeah very pleasant indeed uh, 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 harriet has been quite cunning though of course um because um i guess the idea is after bishop f4 which is uh very natural mm. um, is she going to uh to try out a knight h3 check she might she might uh, takes that. takes and then i mean we can go we can go queen b3 that's uh, uh interesting and then queen takes b7 um but the question is but the point is of course we've got some counterplay on these uh on these light squares not clear though this uh because uh we're gonna we're gonna lose two pawns pardon me um we can do something like queen h5 to get into f3 but we go king h2 wow. then the bishop goes somewhere we go queen takes c6 no no that's a pretty uh a pretty murky one you know it's um <laughs> she, she went the other way she went instead um bishop to d6 instead of bishop yeah f4. i can understand that that's uh i can definitely understand that um would be worth uh, uh would be worth doing that bishop c5 rook d1 yeah i mean the bishop's going to get back uh, get back into the fold um and uh, you at least have avoided this little trick i, I definitely think that was uh, that was uh, a good decision 
Kessie's um, running very low on time, actually. Nice yeah, position, been... but not much time. Oh, good Lord. Ketty has been uh, running quite short of time in this thing. I think she's been uh, getting, you know, well, not struggling, but, you know, getting used to the um, uh, to the rapid play has been more, uh, has been tricky, yeah. but I think she's looking pretty good here. Yeah. Um, so she's got uh, two pieces for the rook. This one's hanging, but she's attacking this one and this one and then also this one. So, um, uh, uh, yeah, I don't actually know what... Um, uh, yeah. What we could do for best here. Um, I suppose what I'd what I'd really like, I suppose, is to play takes on here. I think, and then um, just assuming you go, uh, just take the rook directly. Uh, wouldn't flip an attack. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, well, if you take the rook directly, I'm. I'm I, uh, it's quite. It's not hundred percent clear. As always with Zoe, there's always swindling chances. Um, so, I mean, if you go to something like bishop c3, king e2, bishop a, you know, bishop a1, well, that wouldn't be good anyway. But uh, um, the idea is I want to have knight c6 and uh, and rook yeah. e1. So maybe maybe the most obvious, let's have a look at it then, is bishop a1. And then I'm going to go castles. Uh -huh. So if, if, you, if you castle, then I'm going to go, you know, rook. Um, oh, actually, I might even go, I might even go king e2. That might be clever. Yeah. Not 100% clear. But so if castles, I'll castle probably. Uh, but the idea was bishop c3, yeah. knight c6. And you I don't have a queen d2 check because the bishop can move backwards. Indeed. But actually looking at it, queen d7 is simply um, fine. E extremely fine. We, we don't actually have any... No, because knight a7, you just castle. We don't have any rook d1s or anything like that, what I was hoping for. So, yeah, this must be very good. I think bishop a1 is just going to be uh, huge against that. So is there something else? Well... Rook d1, and we could probably just take on c3 and take on d4. I mean, that's uh, um, that does look pretty good. Um, I suppose the only thing that you could think of is I go rook d1, bishop c3 check, probably king e2, bishop takes d4, I can go queen b8. Um, and if you go castles, I could try bishop d6 here, so hitting that one and also hitting that one as well. Um, yeah. Actually, they I mean, do, yeah, they've got most of the way down that line on the board already. Okay. I mean, I could go queen b6. This is one idea. And just uh, take the three pieces for the two rooks, which in principle is uh, an advantage for black. But, um, uh, but yeah, still plenty of... Uh, oh, they've uh, looks like they're going to do it, actually. In that. So I'd imagine that Zoe would play bishop d6. I'm just trying to think, you know, is there some clever way for, um, for uh, uh, black to do this? I mean, b4 is one idea. Um, uh, bishop b6 um, b4 is one idea uh, just for the idea of rook d4 I go bishop a6 check um, ah maybe uh, actually e5 is much stronger that's much stronger then bishop f8 I've got bishop g4 and of course, with e5, I'm protecting this pawn mm. d4. So that's actually just completely winning for uh, for black. This um, ah, I went bishop b5. Okay, um, that's fair enough. Uh, takes takes queen a5, rook d2. But this is just uh, this is huge. Little trick there. B4 check, mm -hmm. discovered check. Winning the queen is uh, is on the card that, there. So. Ketty is um, um, is doing very nicely there. Ketty is going to be, I think, winning very very soon. Now, Clarence Park, uh, this is still a very tight game, um, but uh, uh, the thing that Harriet's doing very well is keeping her time going. So she's uh, got three minutes uh, uh, to, to just under one minute. But there are weak pawns, uh, C6, A5. Um, uh, this, um, uh, and, it, and this king is incredibly safe for uh, for black. So Harriet's got, got some some problems there. I mean, I, I'm wondering, I mean, should you be playing a move like Queen B5? Maybe you should be. Um, it's not really oh, one... mind an endgame, yeah. It's yeah. not 100% what you want, really. But um, endgame against juniors, yeah, yeah, maybe. But it, if it's a bad endgame, of course, oh, that's not good, that's not right. Um, so I think we should have gone f3 and then um, and then bishop f1. I think that would have uh, forced yeah. probably a very, a very good version of that ending. Um, yeah. this has definitely improved for black, I would say. Um yeah. It's not perfect yet, but uh, but it's improved. Yeah. 
it's going to be hard to make um to make a win of this because uh you know these um uh yeah i mean these uh these pawns are going to come under under some pressure uh but uh with it's plenty of time extra and that's always important you know i mean that's yeah. uh i think that you know even in an end game that helps just to be able to think about it in a balanced way so knight e5 should be played now uh we don't want to uh um, to let our rook get onto uh, onto any painful diagonal, and Harriet plays it very quickly. So um, now this is okay for uh, for Black now. I mean, the 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 biggest problem were the, were the weak pawns. Ooh, and now this one. Now it's starting to go. Yeah. Um, that's not good. I mean, um, uh, Harriet would be happy with that now because it, it, she doesn't now have to deal with this bishop pair. So. Yeah, I mean, still, um, um, I think we're still, you know, completely within the boundaries of a draw here, but yeah. Uh, a lot of white's advantages are being uh, are being trained ready for um um nothing concrete you know and uh, yeah. this is again not bad we're going to get e5 but the second rank is weak you know so uh, it's um um and this pawn is going to be running as well so, and you know you, you can get a past e pawn but but black's king is very close whereas this past b pawn is well oh actually bishop b6 now is uh, is a very simple move um Chase away the rook, and then we're going to go b4. So, uh, yeah, I think this uh, the tim pressure, and maybe um, yeah, being slightly less used to uh, to end games. This is uh, making the difference here because Harriet is uh, steaming through now. Mm. Uh, horsey just okay. So if both go the way we think they are. It'll it'll be a tie at the top of this tournament. Yeah, get, get more time as well, which is nice. And uh, playing very solidly against uh, against uh, so yeah, a bishop b7 is a good strong move here. I think well, queen b6, queen b6, ah, rook c3 is coming in. I was going to say, Keshi loves these uh, attacks. So uh, in she comes, and yeah, horsey chess very short of time now as well. Rook c3 is is just killing now. So um, looks like Keshi going to pick up a point, and uh, looking good for Harriet as well. Very very nice ending here. Yeah. Still not, not up, still not still not up in material, so still you know stuff to do. But uh, um, but with a time situation and uh, and the position here, you'd really expect uh, um, something uh, uh, something good there. Um, maybe rook b4 is quite a nice one. That's uh, mm. let's attack the pawn and uh, and ask uh, you know ask white what you're going to do. Rook a8. That's yeah. another nice move actually. Rook's coming yeah, into a8 up. and uh, a2 and c2. That's uh, yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, I probably play rook a4. Would I play? Oh, White's going to play bishop d1 here, so uh, got to be a little bit careful. Um, yeah, um, uh, rook a2, yeah, I mean, rook a2, I think, is probably uh, fits um, Harriet's plan the best. I think, um, could you go rook c2 to stop the bishop? Um, Again, that's what I'm thinking. Rook C2 is uh, is uh, is possible too. Absolutely, that's. Uh, but I think we would take then and and go Rook C1. And uh, I'm not sure how you're going to hold your pawn. To be honest, uh, better not do so, that. Uh, <laughs> so I think uh, I think Rook A2 would be a a, a better idea. Um, and the, the interesting thing is whether after um, if if you go um, oh, G, G6. Okay, G6, that's not one. I was actually I was actually thinking, could you go? That's ridiculous, but uh, rook a2 and meet. Um, um, I wanted to meet uh, bishop d1 with yeah. rook c2, yeah, that's what I wanted. Oh, no, no, it's not good, it's not good. Takes, takes, we give a rook check and then we get the rook out of the way. So that was just total rubbish, <laughs> total rubbish. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the uh, black, uh, sort of control him. But uh, White's uh, White's starting to fight back here quite nicely. Um, you know, doing so, doing a good job of uh, of confusing stuff. Now, Bishop B two, I'm not sure about, um, uh, but because I don't think that was necessary at all. So, um, uh, Rook uh, H3. This is uh, quite awkward. Now we should really be getting our rooks active. Trying, you know, so like Rook D two yeah. um, would be great. Only I think that there's a problem. There's a tactical problem. Yeah, I think Rook H two check would pick up a rook. So g5, well, not not bad. I mean, we're trying to uh, trying to get our um, our uh, um, our rooks active. Oh, rook h4. Uh, are we getting? Uh, we're going to are we getting... Forward check, I think. Yeah, but so... we've also got a rook b3 coming in. So, um, oh, I'm not sure about this one. We could Actually, go rook e4. Well, I mean, this would be rook and f versus rook and f h versus. Uh, Wow, that would actually be a, I've already seen that once today. That would, that would be a theoretical draw, that one. So 
this is actually not so yeah okay it looks like is Harriet going to go for it or is she going to go rook b4 maybe you just go rook well, b4 can it, can it? if you go to um rook b4 is possible here if you go yeah yeah, she's going to do it and then takes. She's going to have two pawns there two pawns over the other side of the board. So that's probably pretty good, right? Yeah, it's just that this one's a bit passive. Uh, it's just, uh, uh, oh, I think the king's got to stay. Uh, oh, oh uh, not sure. I was expecting the king races to along stay. and then takes off that pawn on b3. Then, then black's just going to win the king. On yeah, the yeah, no, yeah, you're not going to take it, but you're just going to you're just going to hang in, hang around. But I think probably with two rooks, it's too much. I mean, uh, the king can always be chased away very easily there. So, uh, um, but um, oh, that hasn't been completely smooth. But um, but it's been uh, it's been uh, okay. I think uh, um, that should actually be uh, sufficient in the end. Um, I mean, what you could do, um, what you could do simply is uh, um, play something like the rook over to here um yeah g5 is possible at some stage you'll play the rook over swap off the rooks and then just move forward with this pawn so um uh, that should be uh that should be good enough so um uh have a look uh, we've got uh hammer chewer that's tim harding oh yes in the sky awesome. mark page against tim harding uh c2 oh rook c6 oh um that looks like that's going to be a bit of an annoying ending for uh, for black because uh, white's going to take on c2 now. Um, rook b3, king e2. Um, well, I think black's got decent chances to draw because the king side pawns are quite weak. But uh, obviously, you'd rather you'd rather be uh, have the other side of that, wouldn't you? Really? Um, Photo chess has got a lot of stuff against Lara mm -hmm. Bukar, so uh, she's done really well and uh, she's going to win that game. Uh, Karina against uh, Olga Letipova. Karina's uh, um, a uh, a pawn up in this rook and pawn ending. Um, not hundred percent clear. Um, oh, that was uh, yeah. That sort of wasted a bit of time for uh, for White there. You could go after the a pawn, or you could just shove your e pawn through. That's uh, not uh, silly at all to do that. King goes to the back rank. Okay, I, I'd be tempted now just to go King D five and just. Uh, just go e5. Unfortunately, a4 is hanging as well. So maybe white's just going to go for the uh, draw by repetition there. It's probably, uh, it probably is actually a draw, I think. Uh, oh, okay. The rooks have been exchanged. Um, so that's going to give um, uh, white a lot of opportunity to um, uh, to advance the king. Um, now, h5, was that a good idea? I don't know, really, because... Um, these pawns were, especially the pawn on g3, was very, very weak. It was very hard to move the knight. But now you can play the pawn to g4, and you're attacking g3 as well. So I fear that um, that this is just actually going to be winning for uh, for white now, because we can go g4 and just knight takes g5 afterwards. So, uh, ooh, always tricky to hold these. Um, oh, okay, then uh, Harriet's managed to get her rook out from a3. That's very good. Yeah. Um, and now, um, uh, yeah, rook b4 is simple and just going to advance the pawn there. That's uh, uh, that's going to work uh, slowly but surely. So well done, Harriet. Um, let's have a quick look again. Karina, oh, no, no draw by repetition there. So uh, managed to take the, uh, the pawn in h6. Um, well, this should be uh, this should end up as a um, as a draw. Um, G three uh, should be played um, here just to get the uh, the pawn active, and then um, try and uh, a rookie one is possible as well. Uh, we'll go uh, probably go e five g three something like that, and uh, and we should be okay here for black. Harriet inexorably. Uh, so Make the way to, to clean the pawn. Very, rookie, very short side of the pawn, right round. Rook three check wins, and yeah. then uh, rook takes b two. That's uh, just going to win there. Have a look how Karina's doing. <coughs> so, um, uh, got to watch out for this pawn. This one's quite fast now. How are you stopping this pawn? Actually, uh, how are you stopping this pawn? Uh, oh yeah, rook f three. That's how you do it. Oof. Mm -hmm. Rook f3 there, so uh, all a bit thrilling. Um, 
it'll probably go oh, rook f4 okay rook f4 is uh is fine too i guess um i guess we're going to do something like rook g1 just to uh rook e3 is possible king f6 i think now for uh for white uh, rook g4 okay we'll go king f8 now and uh oh king h7 Ooh, that's, uh... Uh, in, in principle not a good idea um because um you were squeezing the white king uh, by um uh, by fighting there but uh now this is going to be tricky Oh, okay. What what is this position? Because we this pawn is 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 really rolling now, and rook f three check. We're going to go king e seven, king h eight. Oh, but the, you can't wait. You can't wait. I mean e six. E six is quite dangerous here. Um, well, now actually, I'd, I think king g six we can do. Okay, king e seven. Um, so we're going to get our pawn on e seven. Now the question is whether whether this is uh um, i would have loved to go on king g6 just to uh to frighten the black king really but um uh but okay uh, king e7 so we'll go king f7 i guess you can just get that uh, pawn further forwards can't you we can get the pawn to e7 the question is what we can do afterwards yeah. um uh because uh we'll go rook e3 and we'll go e7 and then i guess that black is going to have to um wait there with uh with king h7 um anyway, uh, yeah but we can uh yeah it's it's a bit confusing actually um so we, we play e7 black plays king h7 we we come out here yeah i mean, I mean mm, Check. yeah there, there's all sorts of ways of doing it but uh this is the most obvious one uh we go king f6 yeah um and then maybe black can black wait with this just do all this normal G3. Stuff the bridge. well yeah i mean there's there's a g pawn in the middle of course so um uh here um yeah. i mean i guess not i guess not g2 i guess we take on here yeah and we go g2 this is what i was, then we I was trying to How's yeah that? well i don't know i mean we could go queen h5 takes a5 and stuff like that but i, I don't know uh um i don't know actually i don't know how good this is uh this is yeah. probably just a draw, I think. Uh, oh, what happened? It finished. Whilst ah. we were um, <laughs> slow sloth. Where was it? Black one. Oh, no. Did white lose? White lost. Oh, white ran out of time. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> dear me. Dear me. Oh. Oh, that's a shame. Oh. Oh, that's a real shame because, uh, you know, it's the sort of position where you sort of said, you know, white could, oh, and uh, slow, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a real shame. Real shame, that one. Um, hard luck, Karina. We thought you were doing really well there. But, um, um, but yeah, time that happens and, uh, and uh, uh, black wins. So was that the final round? Uh, the final round. So the winners, the joint winners of the tournament, um, Wait, they'll, they'll, they'll do a thingy, a ranking thing. I wonder if there's a tie break. But the joint winners on um, five, six out of seven is Harriet Hunt and Ketty Grant. Um, and then they are followed by Tricia on five and a half. Okay. Not bad. Not we do bad. have a clear one, two, three. Or no, we don't. We have a joint first and then a clear third. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, Ray Lynn, sorry, we, we saw a few of your games and we were cheering you on and then somehow things always just seem to, to fall not quite right for you. But um, but anyway, well played. Good that you've played so many events and it's been uh, it's been lovely watching you play. So, uh, you know, just uh, next time will be much, much better. Ray Lynn. Um, let's have a look. So uh, how about the seniors, actually? What uh, what happened there? Let's have a look. Seniors, we have. So the over 50s rapid, we have, we actually already have the rankings on that. So first place, half point lead, um, is Grandmaster Keith Arkell. Um, yes, he was on six out of seven. Um, and followed closely behind by Graham Waddingham on five and a half. And then in third place, we have John Pitcher on four and a half fantastic and the over 65s 
I was just looking, looking up Keith's age, actually, just out of curiosity. Um, so Keith is, 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 has he turned 60? Is, yeah, 59 or 60. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the I, bet, I, bet, I, I bet he's looking forward to the over 65s. My goodness. Uh, he just uh, an, an, oh, another fresh chance to get a world really title in the seniors. Well. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I suppose in the next five years, some strong people will come along into the over 50s. That is true. That is true. Uh, okay, and so into the over 65s, and we have um, a clear winner there as well. One point clear, actually, of the field is Paul Kemp, followed oh, okay. by three. So he's on six out of seven, and he's followed by three people on five out of seven, which is Stuart Fishburn, Pat Twomey, and Mark Page. Okay, Mark Page, yay! Okay. We uh, we interviewed Mark, didn't we? For um, uh, that's right, for our chest. chest for life in the time of coronavirus. Indeed, it was a very a very nice chat. We, we hadn't uh, I, I'd never met him before. You you no. hadn't either, had you? Uh, but no, uh, um, John John Actually, Saunders he recommended him to us. He was recommended John, John, by John Saunders. John Saunders recommended him to <laughs> us and uh, and said you should have a chat with him because uh, he was a, a joint uh, British over the board. Uh, um, I think it was uh, over 65's uh, champion, and uh, and yeah, it was a lovely chat. Had a good, really nice chat, and he showed us very proudly the um, uh, his first win against the Grandmaster at the age of 64, where he beat Mark Hebden. Um, you know, very nice, a very nice game actually. Um, it's, yeah, everyone uh, was picking games against Keith Arkell or Mark Hebden. It's us. true. He, he, I mean, I think that's a, a real testament to how much. Um, you know, Mark and Keith play the weekend circuit. Because, how, much, uh, how well respected they are and how often they play. <laughs> exactly, because, um, uh, you know, everyone, the, 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 the win that they treasured was normally against either either Mark or Keith, you know, just, uh, and of course, you know, on the law of averages when they're playing, uh, you know, sort of, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 of these weekend tournaments every, yeah. year, every year, you know, then, um, you know, it's... Uh, um, <laughs> yes, indeed. It, this was our, our Gabriel Garcia Mar Marquez, but we weren't actually. Um, we thought of it uh, independently, but there, there were other people we who. Did, um, we did come up with the name based on that reference, but. <laughs> yeah, but uh, a lot of other people did as well. So we weren't hundred uh, percent original on that, but maybe for chess, we uh, we actually were. Well, so. Um, um, it, um, but they're nice interviews, actually. I mean, uh, it's well worth it. It's on our other channel, Chess for Life uh, channel, and it's uh, yeah. There's a, a few very nice ones, you know. Also with. Um, Peter Wells, uh, Grandmaster, with Harriet, uh, as, as we said, um, with... Um, um, John Levitt, uh, who's uh, commented on this stream, and, oh, all sorts of people. Keith Arkell, people. of course, as well, oh. and um, uh, Los Cooper, uh, popular yes. I am, and, uh, and captain, I think, uh, ha probably uh, the, the number of people who haven't been captained by him in British chess is uh, is smaller than the people who have. He's had... Uh, He's been captain of many, many teams. So, um, yeah, it's a very nice series. So uh, if you want to catch up with people you haven't seen for a while, then uh, that was the idea of the series. Then uh, there's about, uh, I think, 15 interviews on there. With Wait a minute. I'm going to I'm gonna just find it on here and then uh, post a link. Ah, put the link in. So, um, but okay. So uh, that, that's... Um, one, one, one more thing I just wanted to say was that person that won the over 65s, was born in 1948, so it looks like he is um, 72. So I think that's a, good Lord. A, 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 a very good performance by that's him. Right, that's right, indeed. Uh, we, we did interview uh, Kenneth Regan as well, and uh, oh, that was indeed. that was purely done, done purely done in. That was very interesting as well. He's been doing it's... all the work on um, on uh, analysing how, uh, how cheating is detected in chess. Um, fair yeah, play, I... is call it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's a he's a he's a brilliant mathematician, and uh, and uh, but indeed we did pick him for uh, the fact that he had the same name as Natasha, and uh, it was a, a very entertaining chat. I didn't know him at all. I, had you met him, uh, Natasha? No, no. I mean, I, I I friended him on Facebook or whatever. We saw some comments, and we had the same name, so I thought, oh well, let's see who this guy is, sort of thing. And uh, yeah, no, um, yeah, he, it was he was he was very happy to be interviewed. So that was that was really nice. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, um, let's have a look. We've got um, uh, the championship starting at four o'clock, haven't we? Uh, yes. Um, uh, so a bit later. So, break, and then we will be back ready for the final round of the championship. And what you can expect from that final round is uh, 
Tamne Chopra on board one against Michael Adams. Michael Adams is half a point clear of the tournament. Um, uh, he's ahead of both Matthew Turner and Amit Ghazi. So Matthew and Amit both have six. Michael Adams has six and a half. Matthew takes on another Matthew. So you'll have Matthew against Matthew commentated by Matthew. Uh, so Matthew Turner against Matthew Wadsworth. And we have Amit Ghazi against Daniel Fernandez. And, um, and actually board four is another interesting one to watch too, which is um, Grandmaster Bogdan Lalich against Harry Grieve. Oh, that should be a good one. Where yeah, is that? A lot, of, a lot of nice matchups again. Oh, we can we can also look forward to um, Thomas Villiers' uh, hack attack against Katagina Toma, who actually uh, we've we've noticed plays sort of very solidly and, and gradually. Exactly. So be a kind of clash of styles there. On, That's going to be a good one. That's going to be a good one. Eight, so that'll be one to watch too. Yeah. Okay, so we'll see you very shortly, actually, um, in just over half an hour. Okay, that's time for about five or six chocolate biscuits, and then see you. Go about... easy on the chocolate biscuits. <laughs> and see you at ten to four. See you soon. Thanks very much. Thanks. Bye.